Previously. Previously. <laughs> Previously on the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Like Titus O'Neil looking dudes sitting there holding the, you know, garden, garden the tomb. And the next thing you know, this little angel comes by, moves the rock, and then Jesus comes out. Does he, and I guess he puts a, some, some type of, I don't know, rear naked choke on these dudes. Boom, boom, because he went to uh, Gracie, Jerusalem. I think Jesus was a brown belt. Oh, yeah. Jesus is a black belt. Come on. Jesus was a brown belt. Why would belt? he be a black belt? Because, I mean, I don't know if too many, I mean. That's a country song, by the way. What, Jesus was a black belt? Yeah. Jesus was a black belt. <laughs> wow. You are listening, you are listening to the Bum of the Love Sponge Show. <laughs> Broadcast rights for the Bubba the Love Sponge Show have been granted to this station by the Bubba Radio Network and is intended solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this production without the express written consent of the Bubba Radio Network is prohibited. Trying to get my pairings about myself. Hold on, stand by. There we go. Thank you. Uh, April Fool's Day, 2024, and um, this is this this is actually you know maybe maybe I should make a bigger deal about it, Seth. I know that you had suggested that you would like to do a Tuki Tuki uh, Morning Zoo uh, April Fool's high spot. I know now. Don't and don't even think about lying. Because you did, don't lie, but did you not come to me and and suggest that we do like a Tuki Tuki uh, um, April Day, April's Day, April Fool's Day, a high spot? Yeah, I uh, I kind of threw it out there. The Z Morning Zoo on Z100. <laughs> Cooper loves $50 I'm on the cash app. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Seth. Well, we're, you know, we're doing some engagement farming right now, so I just figured, you know, we put up like, hey, you know, Bubba's last show today. We put it up all over the place, and you know, we just reap the we reap the analytical benefits of it. But I understand that it's a little dated, and uh, you know, people do pranks every day. So why just on April first? Right, exactly, because because the average morning show does, or the average cornball top forty highly consulted only reads a complete sheet. Uh, is given a, an actual you know format clock and has you know five speed breaks an hour consisting of forty five seconds. That's usually the mentality of those that participate in Zoinksville April's Day Fool you know pranks, so to speak. My apologies. Somebody's. Oh my God! Did you hear that? Anna was pregnant? No. Anna, is it true? I don't know. We'll talk about it later. Oh, my God. Anna might be pregnant. I don't think you're supposed to do those ones. No, that's that would be one that we could potentially do. Everybody believe it, and then we, think, and we say it's really just an April. See, that's why I don't do them. It's stupid. Well, you got to think even about the most, Bubba, even the most, Even the most salacious. <laughs> no, but that would be one of the more salacious one, ones we would come up with, right? What are you going to? What, what else are we going to come up with? Uh, Bubba's son comes back and says hi to him. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You're right. Me being pregnant is more believable. Special yeah. guest Hulk Hogan's coming back. <laughs> no, that's not. No, yeah. Anna just or- organically finding out that Anna might be pregnant. She's Mister Period for too much. She's taking the big EBT. The the uh, mer- EBT. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's just beyond. She's taking the EBT t- uh, the, or whatever test. <laughs> And she's going to pee on the stick. I got food stamps, Sal. And Zoinksville, uh, Seth, she's going to pee on the stick at 8.30, and we're going to see the big Zoinksville results. April Fool's really on and never was pregnant. Who would ever want to get that bitch knocked up? Nobody. I just wanted to just, I think maybe I just wanted to make everybody aware of it today, because I already saw one online, and it kind of got me. It was lids that said they were making hats without a brim, and I was like, wow, that's really stupid. And then I realized that it was April Fool's, so I just want everybody to stay vigilant today. Hey, listen, man, if we were, (laughs) if we had the kind of money that the lids corporation brought in, I'd be tukey tukey it every day. I can only imagine how much money lids makes, right? Oh, geez. So the other thing is this and and maybe i don't new rules for e-bikes and e-scooters all right what's the new rule don't tell are they gonna dan are they gonna maybe take take 
like you know that course that I go to that you ride, right? Mm-hmm. You know that I wonder. I, I wonder if they're taking e bikes and scooters off of you know the bike trails. I think there's going to be like for parking and for disarray because you know my biggest gripe with those e scooters, especially the ones you rent, is people just throwing, throwing them down. everywhere. It looks like everyone's at the, the the entire town at some points. And it's weird because it goes up and down. Like sometimes you see a lot of them, and sometimes you don't see any of them. But when I think really, I think it's really based on how many lightning games there are for real. Right. And then just the whole entire town looks I, like I, a, I, a crappy on, backyard. They're, 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 showing, they're showing right there. Like people just throw them down. Yeah, that's what it is. It's, yeah. You, you got to park them in their designated parking spots. I heard that they find them in the river. Are they, are they gonna what? I mean, like if you do flip, like what they have the they're gonna have. Oh God, they're gonna have. Uh, Wasn't Warren? Didn't he used to do rest and recovery, rescue and recovery on these? Yes. Let me. Yes. Let me. Didn't you have the hustle where you would go at night yep. and pick up like you could get twenty in the back of your pickup truck and charge them and then drop them back off? Now, but would you, you, have, would you have to charge them? Yes. So, I would, I would try it was quick. It was like a little computer charger thing. I know, but like how long did it take to charge them? Uh, if they were completely dead, about two hours. Okay, so that means you have to have them like, you know, like you have to go take them to your house. Yep. Charge them. Now, now do you, do you while you're charging them, do you go out and try to get another? Yeah, load? you can get as many as you want. As, as many. That's what I was doing, yeah. You don't do any more? <clears throat> no. no. Well, they, they, took it, they took it away during COVID. It was during really? the fast fresh seafood debacle. Yeah, he was, was, he was really trying to do anything right. he couldn't survive. Yeah. So, so, let, me, COVID, so let me now do. I think they're. All, I think they do it all in house now, don't they? Yes, they do. Where they, instead of having private contractors out, like you know, a bunch of lummies, that they just have, you know, they have, they do it in house. Yeah, and I, I think, think that they have the ability where. You would you would just be driving around and you'd see a stack of them and you'd throw them in the back of your car. Whereas I think the if they do it themselves, they actually have GPS geo targeting where it takes them. It can take them, you know, because if you're working for the company, I'm sure they have like a, on their screen the guys in the pickup trucks picking them up actually have the location of. Oh them. yeah, I'm sure they got yeah. the whole, t- whole right. town. Exactly. Right. Everyone towns. Town. Yeah. Meanwhile, Lummy's just driving up and down the streets trying to find them. It, with, well, it, there would be. I would. Know. I would get. I would get a, a, a the GPS on them too. That's why a lot of them were in the 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 the, the bad ghetto? areas. Mm-hmm. Yes, the ghetto. And how much would you make? How much do they pay? Like five bucks a bike? Or? Well, if the ones that were like uh, really far off, like uh, maybe stolen in the ghetto, they were about eight to ten bucks. Didn't you say sometimes you'd have to jump over fences to yeah. get them because some and, guy and, would yeah. take it. Some guy would take it to his uh, to his ho- uh, to his uh, apartment complex. They had like gates. <laughs> And he would, you know, put it like on his patio or something, and you were literally like, you know, a repo man. Lovey was dog the bounty hunter on the e-bikes, the, uh, and also there was a couple about that would, an e-board that would take it into their condos, like, and leave them in the hallway. So I'd wait till someone comes in, break in, which you're not supposed to do, and, and go <laughs> yeah, find I mean, it. Man, tenacious. All for eight dollars because the stolen Joey Logano ruined this guy's whole yeah. fish supply. So yeah. let me like, what would it pay? Like, I know it varies, but like, just normally on the average, what would pay to pick up, charge, and then I'm sure. You took it back to their central depot, right? You you just took it back to like a, a station area, okay. like downtown. So and how much would it like all in the bike, best the, soup to nuts? Uh, about ten bucks. I back ten bucks ten, a bike. Ten bucks a bike. Yeah. If you picked it up, if you picked it up at night to charge it and throw it back out there, you could get about ten bucks a night. But it ruins your night, doesn't it? And you work in the morning, or you used to, or did you not work in the morning back then? No, I just did whatever. He was just drinking to get. He would drink all all night while they were charging, and they would come in <laughs> he here would, and he was right. actually drinking while he was picking them up. You know, <laughs> yeah. just having a good old time. Yeah. music cranked up. You know, right, Lummy? Yeah, going to East Tampa. Yeah. You know, now, did, now were there the other kill. guys? Like, were there other? You weren't the probably the only guy with a pickup truck that were picking these up. There probably were guys with pickup trucks that maybe had like little trailers. Yeah, in the beginning it was me and one other guy because I would run into him, and then you guys ever the, fight over a bike? Like you guys 12. arrive at the same bike at the same time? <laughs> Not in the beginning because we kind of had an understanding on what areas we would take. We talked it out. They had territories, <laughs> yeah, like Billy Jean. Like the wire. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like the wire. He, he had territories. Him and a guy met for lunch once. They let me took out a city map and drew a line. Okay, now this I got is, East Tampa. You got West Tampa. But yeah, don't cross over. Right. Um, you know, we got one street that we'll, we'll I'll, I'll give you a one street buffer. After that, man, I'm coming out with lead. And then t- it started getting to where it was like six, seven people, and then you were like fighting for them. Like in UT, there'd be all these people that just started showing up and like uh, explorers just throwing them in their back seat and doing all this different. I wonder stuff, what type so. of. Uh, we're, by the way, we're talking about these e bikes and e scooters that are in our town, and I'm sure no matter you live in Orlando, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure Fort Walton Beach on the beach. Uh, you know, I'm sure Phoenix, uh, certainly Tampa, 
all the cities that were hurt in uh, uh, Orlando, I, they all, I guarantee you, every municipality that, that you know, we're heard terrestrially has these e- 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 rentable e-bikes, e-scooters in their downtown metropolitan area or their tourist, you know, area. And um, it's just, they're really, I don't know. I, I'm, you surprised I, more people I, I don't like, get hit, hit, like get hit by cars. They do get hit by cars on them, and it's a great call me, please eight 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 SLS firm. <laughs> get hit on a scooter because no one's looking for them, and people drive real aggressively now, with them. Here's the thing: Can you see where um, municipalities might make them not? You can't drive them on the road. You can only drive them on sidewalks, just because. Is that the pro? Is the problem? Well, and they're out of drunk. I think most of the time. Yeah, I mean, is the problem them being on the road, or is the problem just them scattered around yes. and, and it looks trashy? All the above. Right. Some places, though, like the GPS just shuts off and you can't use them. Like when I would use them in St. Pete sometimes on the pier, it, it, you couldn't use it. It would turn into like a manual scooter. Yeah, it does it on the river walk in Tampa. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, so they'll they automatically um shut off sh- like you know you just gotta carve out areas where, they keep, where, where you can't go yeah yep. right well, they're gonna start charging you more money i guess if you don't put it back to the dock or if you take it to illegal uh spots oh so that's yeah, right because they have your credit card on 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 file and mm-hmm. maybe they could see like okay th- th- those things are smart as hell so if, if you put the kickstand down and you nicely you know kickstand it like wait so it's straight up and down and it looks good then you're caught you know that you're, you're no charge and but if they if you just lay, lay it down you know then they you know ding your credit card for an extra dollar for the laydown fee right <laughs> something yeah, like that th- well they figured it out so when i would pick up a couple of the scooters in east tampa uh there was a couple of guys maybe a couple of brothers that would tell me how they do it is they get the gift cards and they only put a minimum amount on it uh 10 bucks Make and it. then they, they they take the scooters. Oh, no. the gift like cards are like visas. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so they'll get a gift card. <laughs> yep. A visa, like, uh, like a it. visa gift card. Yeah. And that's oh, that's what they're using yep. for um for their e bikes. That way, if they wanted to get cute, the e bike company wanted to get cute and try to you know gouge you down, Willie. Then you only got a gift card. It's only worth fifteen bucks to begin with. Or they just take the scooters. Wasn't this to keep the world greener? Yeah. And now it's just becoming, it's, it's like five I, things that are wrong with the whole process. But not, not only that, but I've also heard that uh, if we were to go totally green, like if we somehow could wave a magic wand and we all go totally green by like the next two years, that there, we're not, that our that our power grid, it would completely melt down. Yep. Like our power grid is not even close to being set up to being able to accommodate what they've set forth, what we need to be electric by, that our power grid may, c- could not keep up. Yes, I've read that and heard that on the news multiple times, especially in the last year or two. A couple problems. You know, power grid doesn't hold up when it's winter time. The cars, you know, the electric cars just become crippled. But the, with the e-bikes, you know, the problem is is that sometimes people will responsibly park them, and then like a crazy guy walks around or someone angry Push and knocks over. them all yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I saw that in Miami one guy. One guy was just going down and just kicking scooters over. Well, maybe they have it like this, Dan. Dan, they can't gouge you. So, like, if you if you put the kickstand up and it stays upright for a minute, then, you know, you're out of the woods. Because after that, then somebody could truly, you know, yeah, you not, take, knock you, it over. You take a picture and send it in. Oh, God. It seems so it problematic now. You're taking people it are, in. People are throwing them in the river, too. Yeah, I heard that was that, a big yeah. problem. Yeah. <laughs> For a while in Tampa, up, they I'd couldn't go, get them to stop. Yeah, I'd go down to the river, and there'd be like seven GPS beeping. Yeah, but here's the deal, man. If, you, if they got your credit card on the deal... I mean, again, and, and you get you throw it in the water, man. You know, it's like a one thousand dollar charge or something, right? Yeah. I mean, or like uh, whatever. Unless you got that gift card thing. <clears throat> Unless you do the gift card gimmick. Yeah. Don't you think there's probably people in like I don't know, like Oregon or like the Pacific Northwest that that treat their e-bikes with respect and you know put them up properly and all that? Yeah, no. there's yeah yeah there's there's probably some we're heathens. Na- nice nicer cities. We Tampa, but I don't. I think I in think the overall, are worldwide. So. I think over, overall, we're probably not the most heathenistic. I mean, I got to think like DC and Baltimore. And they're like, banging like, the bikes and then throwing them in the I river. Don't know. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. I, I just know that we're not going to do a, a, a an April Fool's high spot. But what I should Thank do you. is maybe I should. I, I'm looking at this all wrong. 
because it's actually my anniversary of being on the radio. My first day ever on the radio was April 1st, 1986. Wow. That was my very first day on the air. So let's celebrate you today. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like maybe instead of every nut hut having some uh, April Fool's high spot, we legitimately say, and 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 if you look at my past history, it is it's kind of um, I don't know. It's kind of it kind of go right along the lines with the type of radio history I have. Is the fact that my first day on the air? It's somewhat is it prophetic. Is that what you would say? Yeah. Yes. It's somewhat prophetic. The fact that one of the fi- the highest find, one of the most controversial, uh, you know, recognized as one of the top ten shock jocks in the entire industry ever in the history of radio, started his career on April Fool's Day. Maybe that's somewhat prophetic. I don't know. So what? What's what's? 80? I can't believe it's been thirty-eight years. God, has it been? Has it been thirty-eight years? Eight years, dude. Man, we should do. If I'm Man, on, if I'm got, still your, on the your air, mouth tired. If, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> is your mouth I, tired? I'm just. Yeah, I'm just worn out. Because I got to think, Lummy. Since nine, since ninety-six, for the most part, with the exception of two year, two years since ninety-six, I've done mornings. So what, how long has that been? 96, that's 28 years. So take to about 26 years of mornings. And, and I think, well, Anna certainly and, and, and Seth have both done shows that are not the morning. Like, you know, I, Seth, you did, you've done mornings and you've done afternoons. And Anna, I think you did nights. I did nights. I had the opposite schedule. But <clears throat> right, now, yeah. right. Would you not collectively agree that mornings are the toughest? As without far, it, without as, question. As far Especially as, for me, because I'm, I'm just not a morning person. It, so. That's the most relevant and coveted time slot, though, it too, sure right? Is, well, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's where you got to be if you, I mean, you know, it's, it's old, old school radio yeah, you won't. You the the big money. The big big money was complete talk, no records, no no music, uh, morning drive monologue radio. You know the Howard Stearns, the Man Cows, the, the Bob Bubba's. and Toms, the Bubba the Love Sponges, the Lex and Terry's. You know those were million dollar plus shows, and you're not going to get. And there were now over the years. There's been a few afternoon. You know Don and Mike. Um, Steve and Gary, there's been, there, there's been some afternoon drive, huge franchises that were, you know, able to have over a million dollar contracts, but for the most part, you know, you had to be a monologue based talk show in the morning in order to make the, the biggest money, the biggest money in radio, the quarter, it's like the, it's the quarterback, mm-hmm. you know, morning, the morning drive, all talk. Uh, show is like the quarterback. But how did the like the rush, uh, the uh, Hannity, Laura Ingram? They've, how did they make so much money? Because they do they don't do mornings. They do they, an afternoon. Right? Again, I said there are some there are some you know some some uh, exceptions. exceptions. There are some exceptions. There's there's several. You know, there's there's there are some exceptions. Not a lot. But there are some. And they're people, usually like conservative talk show type, you, like conservative political shows that, mm-hmm. that do that kind of numbers. Yeah, for the most part. Let me. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say people want to kind of go back today and listen. Uh, Rhett made a '98 Rock one, and uh, it's up on YouTube. And a Power Pig one from a week ago. I sent you the '98 Rock one, the bootleg, all the audio we're finding. He's making like little. Uh, now are teasers. we are we listening to him so that we yeah. because there's some language that I used to use on '98 Rock that. I don't think I can use in today's no, window. Red, Red is going through because we have to take out the music you used to play, too. So Red's going through and, and combing them. All right. Well, Red, thank you for doing that. I know it's very uh, time-consuming. So, yeah. If you want to go back and listen to some back-in-the-day stuff, we are putting that up on uh, on our YouTube channel. Yeah, it's teasing it for uh, the Bub Army HQ stuff. So stuff you can listen to on Bub Army HQ. Yeah, BubArmyHQ.com has, has it all. Is this stuff? Is this stuff that we're finding that we didn't even have on HQ prior? Correct. Yeah, it's stuff is, that was in the safe. Oh, it was. Oh, so it's uh, it's the safe stuff. Yes. Is yeah. it? Is some, said, some of it good stuff? I sent. It, I oh, sent yeah. you the link of the re- recent one from '98 Rock. Yeah. It's so so the. I mean, the format that we found it, most of the 98 Rock stuff. I mean, it's a full binder of CDs upon CDs. I think this one folder of 98 Rock stuff that we have is only one CD or two. 
Yes. But um, like it's just a ridiculous amount of stuff. But it's all best ofs. So it's all segments that have already been cut up, cut out. You know, it, it's not like old full shows. It's just mm, best ofs. He really didn't do anything bad. I got hit by a car. <laughs> oh, that's my mom. That's Janie yeah. Cakes. That's my mom. I'm calling my mom live on the air. This is old. These are old 98 Rock shows. Uh, and they're available on our YouTube channel at the Bubba Army, or you can go to Bubba Army HQ. But what today's you? <laughs> you wonder oh, what's wrong today? I think this is when I had Cowhead with me. Yeah, it was. That's how old this is. Yeah, this most is of these are. 96, 97. Nothing yeah. wrong with me because I've never been to jail or nothing. Oh, yeah. Well, you believe me. You're it's only just 10. I'm the one who's been to jail and a crazy home. Okay, now let me ask you. Ask you I want to ask you, Ray says, you tell me. I want to ask you a question. You tell me if you know it, okay? All right. Have you ever heard of a DJ in this town who is the best DJ in this town ever to live? He says it like it is, and even the black radio stations rip off his game. Even the black people listen to his show. I'm going to say one name, and you tell me if you ever heard of him. Okay, what's his name? And you tell me if what you think about him. Yeah, I, my, my T.D. Duke's impersonation is not too good. <laughs> okay? Yeah. yeah. Some of it uh, uh, has an age the best. <laughs> what's the master? Why don't you tell me a name? I'm going to tell you a name. You ready? Yeah. Homie name be Bubba the Love Sponge. Yeah. You ever love Sponge. Bubba, Bubba the Love Sponge. I Bubba. heard of him. You heard of him. What you hear about him? Yeah, tell me what you know. All I heard was his name before, and right. that's it. That's well, a pretty fresh name, ain't it? Yeah. All right, so anyway, that's You that's, guys had some good chemistry. I never knew that. Oh, well, I, t- I mean, I really literally taught him his trade. I mean, like, for real. I mean, it's like LeBron and Kyrie Irving, man. You guys should get back together one day. <laughs> And the good thing Red's put in 90s like commercials, like your Daewoo commercials uh, in there. You're and... lucky I can't see you right now because that was the dumbest suggestion you could ever make. <laughs> there's just, there's, there's. I called you LeBron. No, but, uh, you know, suggesting that we get back together. <laughs> well, I just think that's what eventually happens with all this aggression and all these other things that have happened. And then, you know, eventually you guys are cool again. No, please. With that guy, what, he, what, what that guy has under, <laughs> what that guy has done to my life. I mean, for real. Like what you know, you you know what that guy's done to my life. Yeah, for sure. You know that everything that that guy's got was completely ripped off of me. The guy has not ever been a real radio guy where he's gone from market to market to market and learned his trade and had you know five, eight, nine, ten program directors sit you down and do air checks and teach you actually teach you the fundamentals of radio and the, and and just the ability to 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 host a fast paced talk show. He did and, have and, a tryout and, in Atlanta though. Yeah, great. <laughs> you did know. get that tryout though, Bubba. So I'm just saying that guy, probably my most hated guy in the world. Please, he's number one. Um, I would say probably of yeah, arch nemeses. Probably. So anyway, let me maybe every uh, <laughs> April Fool's Day instead of you know thinking about a tuki tuki high spot that we're not gonna do and make fun of all other radio stations because they do you know said tuki tuki. Maybe we should say, hey, it's 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 this is legitimately my anniversary in radio. Yeah, happy anniversary. Thank you. Happy thirty eight years. Wow, Dan. I don't know. I think I think I have you beat. Because you had to go to, well, because you, no, no, because he had, no, in his profession of being a plastic surgeon, which was his first job, now, the reason why is because I was, I didn't get any education. I just went right to the radio. uh, So, poor, you know, well, it isn't that I've been, I've done any job longer than Dan, which makes me a better person. Dan actually (laughs) continued his education for 12 years while I'm playing, you know, Rock Me Armadeus. <laughs> Dan, Dan's actually in school. How many years post uh, bachelor degree did you have? Were you actually in school to become a doctor? I did four years of college, bachelor degree, mm-hmm. and then medical school was four years, and then my residency Eight. was six. So I was fourteen. So hold on, you, you, they make you resident that long? Six years, yeah. No, is that like you get paid a little bit? I know, but is that like, like is that intern. standard? It depends on what you go into. You know, if you're just doing internal medicine and pediatrics, it's like three years. If you're doing like urology, well, you know. Four or five. Right. Uh, neurosurgeries, five to seven. What's Plastic lo- surgeries, six or seven. What's lo- like, what about brain surgery? Neurosurgery is like f- five or six. 
So it's one of the longer comparable ones. to yours? Yeah, usually plastic surgery is one of the longest. So when you're done with medical school, mm-hmm. and uh, then you're a doctor that has zero zero street cred because you don't even have a license yet. You have to do a full year of residency before you can even get your medical license. Right. So like, you, graduating medical school means absolutely nothing. You need to get hired on as a resident, For right? At least a year, and then you get an, a valid license. Yeah, unlike law school. Now, again, the only the only places you can usually do residencies are emergency rooms or clinics like that, something like that, right? Or university-based residencies. So there's some private residencies, but most of them are but based out of a university. But for six years? Mm-hmm. You're like a slave, literally now, working 120 did, do, hours a but week. But do they tell you, okay... This is your end date, or does this after you do? You know, they, they watch your work, and you're really good. The master doctor at the hospital comes to you and say, "You know, Dan, I've watched you now for five and a half, nearly six years. Watched you fix bullet holes. Watched you, you know, put people back together. I think you're ready to become a. Fu- you know, I'm think I'm ready to sign off on you. Like, how does that go? How do you know what your last day is? Well, you know, most programs are pretty straightforward, and it's like you know, like a four year or five year or six year. You know, definitely compartmentalized commitment with a you know a didactic uh, uh, schedule that is really based on science some residencies like there was a guy named uh, there's a guy up in at Duke that was a, a chest surgeon he used to call it a decade with Dave because he would literally like say at the end of five years nope you're not ready you need another year and he would do that to people, which is just cruel and unusual. Was it punishment. just so that he could get cheap cheap labor? I don't know. He was just a dick. And he would just keep guys f- you know, indefinitely until he thought they were ready. And then they were great afterwards, you know, but he uh, he was stiff. Most Let me, did you get the James Jordan on the cash? Yeah, get that Cooper left. So sorry. Most residencies are, like I said, they have a finite time. You start on day one. You know that you're going to finish on day, you know, after five so, years. So, but when you're done with your residency and then you know. You're going your own. Now, the day, the, at that point, they literally say, okay, doc. Go, you know, go do what you got to do. Yep. They slap, go start. They go, the nest. go to another hospital and be a doctor. Go yep. to a clinic. Go try to be a partner with somebody. Mm-hmm. Go try to start your own place. Mm-hmm. Now, when but you, at this point, still Bubba, though, at this point, you have a license to practice, but you're still not board certified. You become board eligible, and so most specialties, especially the surgical ones. Make you work for like a year before you can even become board out board to go certified. get your boards, right? Yeah, you have to have some experience. So you had to let me just go, just think about testing. By the way, I got I got an eight ninety on my SAT because I was I couldn't pay attention. I was yeah. like, man, I don't want to be here, man. I hate reading reading these long. St- this is I'm just gonna put C words. Yeah. So, Dan, probably the first test that really meant anything in your life was your SATs. Yeah, I mean, okay. the SAT meant a little bit, but not really. Okay. Okay. Then after that, you're probably, you know, what was your, like, maybe your graduate thesis to be, to get your bachelor? I didn't have to do a graduate thesis. My biggest test after that was the MCAT, trying to get to medical school. All right. So you. That was a brutal the test. The MCAT is not. The is that the pre-test kind of like the LSAT is for yes, the bar? Yes, exactly. It's the so entrance it's exam. The M, it's the MCAT, and then you kind of use that uh, as gauge or what your score is as to how well you would do on the regular regular test, right? Yes, that uh, just like the SAT is the MCAT, is the MCAT just completely a. Uh, a, a, a practice test it doesn't mean nothing or does the mcat actually mean something the mcat's like the sat you get a score if your score sucks you're not getting into medical school you're going to be a nurse oh, okay how well did you do on your mcat smoked it okay at like what's what's a a good score and what was your score i had a what, great what, score what, 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 what's the lowest score or what's it out of like, but hold on what's they the... change it every every few years hmm. so like, when i took it it was out of like 15 times 6 was out of a theoretical 90. All right. And what was a score that could get you into into what a 90 being the highest? What would be a score that would just barely get you into medical school and what would be a score that you're a pimp and you nailed it like you? 6 low 60s get you in and I got in the mid 70s which is pimp pimpville. All right. So you take the the MCAT. Now what's your next test? Then you go through medical school, and then your next test is, for me, it was a three-part series for the just the medical boards. And so it was a, uh, a test you took after your first year of residency, um, and that was the, f- the third part, and then you took the other two parts during medical school. 
And how? And, and, and they're what, like two days, two days, one day. It was five days of testing. And and what's a decent score that you could get? Pass fail. I don't remember scores on that one. All right, it was and, just pass. And then then the boards. Then after you became a plastic surgeon, you had to take the board. The boards. You had to take the plastic surgery boards, which oh. were a two sets. There was a written part that you took about. You know, about Seth, I'm two falling months asleep too on all these tests. <laughs> about two months after you started, it was 900 responses in six hours. 900, 900 questions responses in six hours. I, I literally would, I would literally have an anxiety attack. I would just, I, I just, I'd sign my name and then I'd see all those, I see 900 questions and I would just be like, I, I'm not wired to be able to handle this. The bubbles were so small. It was too go to Burger front King. And back. It was unbelievable. So, okay. Wait, you when just, did you decide that you wanted to be a plastic surgeon? When I was a kid. Oh, so you knew going in that's what you wanted? Yeah, I knew I wanted to be a surgeon like my dad. And then, hmm. you know, he kind of guided me into plastics. Yeah, so when your dad's a surgeon, and then you're like, okay, I want to be a surgeon. And then Daddy Joe's like, listen, let me further narrow you down where you can make the most money, bud. You like boobs, you know, Dan? He's he, like, yeah. You can be doing all <laughs> <laughs> You can be like, penises. I like Joe, boobs. <laughs> Joe, here's, what Joe, here's what Joe really did say. Danny... Hernias only pay so much, right. but rhinoplasties <laughs> and boob jobs and lipo. Woo! I'm not, and you're not dealing with any insurance companies or nothing like that, Danny. Nope, no third parties. Uh, listen, Danny, I, I I became a doctor. I kind of you know learned the ins and outs of being a doctor. And if I was to do it all again, I want you. If you want to make the most money, boom, plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. And so you did that. And then within, with after you became a plastic surgeon, you had to go become a board certified plastic surgery. Correct. So then you take the boards. That written disaster. A, lo a, a lot of a lot of plastic surge a, a lot of plastic surgeons, not only in this town but like Orlando and other affluent towns. You may be. You need to check when you go to that plastic surgeon because you can be a plastic surgeon and not be board certified. Yep. And so and you can oh, be a cosmetic surgeon and not be a plastic surgeon. So you should hmm. really do your due diligence on a person that you're going to see for plastic surgery procedures to make sure that they are board certified because that's a whole other set of hoops they have to jump through, and it makes them that much smarter. Like there's there's that Adams guy. Dan, mm -hmm. that, you know, got recently in trouble. Did, mm -hmm. When did that, I, you know what, that seemed to disappear. Yeah, it's amazing how stuff disappears for him. That disappeared. I know. He'll let go me, be practicing again. Uh, yep. Let me look it up for me if you could. We, we had this plastic surgery, Dr. Adams. Bill. And, and, he, and he was not board certified. And if you remember right, Dan, we started the 12 Boobs of Christmas contest. Mm -hmm. And then him and Drunk Ass Orlando, remember they stole it from they me? They tried to steal it, yeah. Yeah, they tried to steal it from me. And uh, Dan was like, listen, that's fine, but that guy's not board certified. That guy's not board certified. And he just got in trouble. What was he in trouble for? M was it meth? Meth? Was it, it was something yeah, outrageous. Meth. Like meth or something like that. He got in like trouble that. for like breaking and entering, theft, yeah. meth, hiding money in his backyard. I mean, guy's in trouble all the time. Right. So, so, uh, but, you know, so then, hold on. I'm continuing on, <laughs> continuing the track. You put, you, you do the boards, and then a year later, you got to do the oral boards, which is even more torturous. Oral boards. So the oral boards, you have to like take all of your cases from the first year and submit them, and then they choose five or six cases that you did, and they want to just drill you about it and just criticize everything you did from day from minute one until that day. And then they have some cases of their own, and they ask you, what would you do? And you're like, okay, I, I, they show you a kid that's like, his face is all messed up. What would you do? You tell them A, B, and C. Like, nope, that doesn't work. Now what are you going to do? And you tell them, you know, D, E, and F. Do they bring the kid with a smashed up face in there? It's sort of make-believe. Just the pictures. Oh, okay. There's Sorry. Real, pictures of a real kid. But the smashed know, in face, the smashed in face. And but so, you're not really working on that kid. Mm -hmm. They're just asking you what you would do for said kid. Right. And right. everything you do is not going to work. So they get you to like your, your fifth step. And the whole point is you don't want to burn a bridge so that you have five chances of fixing it. So then you got that. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget. I don't know if you had to continue your education as being a plastic surgeon for however many years. I didn't know. Every 10 years, you got to research. All right, so every 10 years, you've had to research what now? Going on almost your third time? Yes. Yeah, two so times. I did it twice where you had to take this massive test. You, you probably got a research coming. Well, they changed it now about two years ago, three years ago. And now if you just do this like a little like one hour, two hour, like little exercise every year, you don't have to research. Oh, oh, perfect. So you're doing that now. Yeah. Now let's not forget. Because it was just a money grab. It was BS. Let's it meant not, nothing. Now let's not forget talking about Dr. Dan's education. Then Dan, after he was the best plastic surgeon <laughs> in town, says, I want to be a lawyer. 
So then I'm assuming you took the LSAT. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. Then you had to take, then you had to go to law school. Right. You, the L, your LSAT determined on whether you could get admitted into law school or not. I'm assuming you probably could have gone to almost any law school you wanted based on your LSAT, but you have a family and a business here in Tampa. So you were, you know, you had to go to a Tampa based law school. I mean, like, you know, could you have qualified for Harvard? Um, I could have. You know, it, it depends. You know, they're, they're, Harvard and a lot of schools are looking for, you know, interesting What did people. you, what did you, what was your LSAT and what does Harvard's, you know, lower end LSAT, sta- you know. Depends what color you are. So okay, well, let's say that you're just an act- Italian man, like an you Italian, are, like Italian pre sixty five, yeah. probably like a fifty. Italian now, probably a sixty. And what did you get? Like a fifty eight. Oh well, you could be, man. But I didn't, have, I didn't have I didn't have the time for it. I understand. So you go get your law. You, so then you go go to law school for what three years? Yes, three years at night. He would work all day. It was two and a half. He would work all day as a plastic surgeon. Then he would go to law school at night for three. Is it was it every day? Uh, it was uh, three three days a week, probably three four day, days a week. Three to four days a week. And what was, what time was the school? Uh, mostly like six to nine. Six, six to, to nine. Eight, six to ten. So you'd go plastic surgery all day, and then go six to nine, three days, four days a week for three and a half years to mm-hmm. law school. Were you on the show at the, this time? No, not much. No, no. no. So I was going to say that's it. then. <laughs> then, then he went, and at that point, you have to pass the bar, which was a mother effer, and uh, two days. to become a lawyer. That's you know the bar. I finished that with fifty eight seconds left. You did, <laughs> but but you passed. So Dan, let me ask you well, a question. Actually, I did well. Actually, get ninetieth percentile. Have you ever? Because ha, have you ever flunked a test? Have you ever flunked one of these tests? No. I mean, like all no. the big te- from the you know again from the um, from the SAT you know to the uh, LMED or whatever it's called. To every test along the way, you nailed it, didn't you? And, I never flunked a test. Like and were that, you no. top in your in your law school class? I finished first in my class in law school. Yes, <laughs> and I was the first one to finish the plastic surgery boards. Out of like all those people, I walked up first, walked out, slammed it down, slammed my pen down real loudly, and walked out and slammed the door like it wasn't Bubba Studio. You want an update on Doctor Adams? Yeah, I do. But what a pimp, what a pimp, Doctor Dan. Yes, give me an update. You, you, you retired. Did, did, he retired? Uh, December 1st, closed his office. Right. He pled guilty. What's Lando going to do for the, you know, <laughs> pick your plastic? Yeah, he, he pled guilty uh, to crystal meth and burglary. Uh. He faced up to 20 years and got 90 days in rehab and had to pay 50,000. Oh, 20 my years, God. he got 90 days in rehab. Yeah. Oh, oh my bull. God. I, mean, I can't believe that, man. He was, he was facing 90 years. No, no, 20 years. I'm sorry, he was facing 20. Years. He was facing 20 years and he got 90 days probation. And the guidelines called for a 22-month sentence. Uh, what a bunch sentence. of nonsense. You know, I, you think about all like the young black kids that have been thrown, you know, they threw them in jail for years and years and years and threw away the key. And this guy gets off. This is multiple times he's had these offenses. Multiple times he's been in trouble for drugs. These are the kind of people. He's dangerous. That when you know you say white people get special deals. It's not white people, it's rich people. Okay. With money. But throw white. White doesn't hurt. White rich guys get special deals. This guy, here's the poster child for it. Absolutely the poster child for it. Bill Adams. 90 days probation when, when he was facing, what, the, at the minimum, 22 months? Yep. And up to 20 years, you said? Yes. Up wow. to 20 years. He must have had a good lawyer. Yeah. Stop. Uh, let me let me go into words so I'm not late. Stop. Anybody watch? Um, we had to eat, I had Easter with my family. We went to, um, Anna, we went to that clubhouse that you and Naba went to. Oh, hell yeah. Did you see Steve? I Yes. Did and, he give you a t-shirt like he gave us? No. Didn't think so. And so, was it like really far away? No, no, no it's not like far two away. Two minutes from her house. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. She's a oh, member okay. at TPC. It's so, it's an awesome club. It really is. It, and you know, Dan, it's TPC is one of those prestigious, like you know, like Temple old memorial. Yeah, yeah. I, is it that, I, is that a TPC? I'll no, tell you. No, what it's, it's, it's no TPC. It's a huge course. 
It's a very that Cheval. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Old okay. Memorial. TPC there's, there, there's uh, like, uh, let me. What are the legendary courses in Tampa? Like the let. Yes, yeah, Cheval. Cheval. Uh, TPC is, is number one. Um, TPC is the most prestigious. Oh, yeah. Man, TPC at Sawgrass. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's What about the, Ennisbrook? I think that's one of them. I think on that side of the bay, I think that's probably in Pinellas the number one. I think. I just feel. I, oh, yeah, I, I don't. A good, that's a really good one. I just hear people talk about it all the time. Yeah, Ennisbrook's probably top five. Amongst all of them. Anyway, Tara's a member because she's super rich. And she, we go. <laughs> Good for her. He, yeah, we're rich. She's just rich as hell. And we go there and have a Easter, you know, Easter dinner or just Easter whatever. And you guys would be very um, impressed as to what I got. What did you get? Oh. Was it like a buffet or was it, no, it, a, it was just made to a, order? No, it was, what you got to eat, you mean? Yeah. So my mom got chicken and waffles. Oh, the I merch, love that. The merch crit got cheese fries. Standard. Um, Tara and Tarek got eggs Benedict, and I got uh, t- tuna sashimi. Really? What? Yeah. Wow. Really? Yeah. Tuna it, like sashimi? Seared, like seared, 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 crusted tuna sashimi. Like a tuna tataki type thing? Yeah. Yeah. What sides did you have? Um, none. That's, That's all I it? Have. That's you like it. Tuna? But I end up eating half of my mom's chicken and waffles. Okay, yeah. well. <laughs> if you want 24-7 on-demand Bubba and the crew, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this. Second dog! <laughs> Billy Long Stroker. <laughs> Bordeaux Perez. So you don't see a lot of Asian plus surgeons no. either. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Oh, <laughs> right, like shit. 73. <laughs> you can't drive, you can't operate. Would you say surgeons or like plastic surgeons? Both. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I've, I mean, I've, I've seen some good female surgeons, but I mean, they're as common as, you know, female NASCAR drivers. Mm. The good ones. Mm. It's pretty rare. Mm. They're like, I want to go to the OBGYN because it's some medicine and it's some surgery. And you watch them operate, and it's like, they look like they couldn't fucking mix dough. Like, what's, what's the deficiency? Is it that they're not precise enough? They don't pay attention to detail? Like... They're just, afraid. It's just like watching, just like watching, it's like watching me try to play a saxophone. It's like they don't know the fuck they're doing. Mm. 
But presumably they went through the same training as you. Right? Yeah, but they were given extra dispensation. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. So just the imagine. DEI so, hire. Right, right. They were. They were. Which apparently is a racial slur now, no, yeah, which is hilarious. Say, yeah, it's helping them, and then you can't say it now. Right, so, right, anyway, right, right, right. It was, uh, yeah. There were a couple in my residency, and they fucking sucked. They just couldn't believe they just sucked. And they were lazy, and they just... Just they didn't make good decisions and they just mm. operating. They were just like watching a fucking juvenile try to do something mm. complex. It was weird. And then I've seen a couple. They're like, fuck, like there's one in the LSU. She was a fucking rocket. She was so fast. She was good. She was smart. She was aggressive. But she had like masculine traits. <clears throat> you know She's one of those girls who's like, fuck off. You know what I mean? But she was a good surgeon. Mm. But you need that. Just like you can't be a nice defensive nose guard. You gotta be an asshole. Like your personality, has yeah. To. It's, a, it's a personality. If you don't have that personality, you're not good at it. Anyone that's a nose tackle is an asshole mm. if they're any good, mm. right, Bubba? Yes, I've heard uh, surgeons and CEOs and I've the other professions were very high on the dark triad. Right. Like right. You know, you know what that is? Machiavellianism, um, psychopathology. Seth, yo. And, What's your uh, name? Uh, so, what? Like? Narcissism. <laughs> what? Filter on backpack. What's up? Back. Do you have an anxiety attack? No, not at all. Okay. Roberto Perez. Um, Mommy, I did a, I did a, or er, Brett, Seth, I did a. I did a pre show on our. Um, oh, this word's racist. No, no, we all just say. We have to on our Twitter racist. today. But, I, but, I, was, but I wasn't into it, so the numbers reflect the bad number. Because <laughs> yeah. I was just tired. And I wasn't have, interacting with them like I should. You don't have to do it every day. Just when oh, you're yeah, feeling I gotta do it every day. Every day. Yeah, just when you're feeling it. Mm -mm. Every day. Doug gets impressions, I love it. I just want to star in the white. The white. Um, okay. That's okay. Why am I sad? A little. I didn't see that. But that bitch didn't quit nothing. She ain't quitting that. She came on Instagram and said, I quit. She said that like 10 times. Pure no 10. She doesn't like being dragged down by everybody. <laughs>
and uh, and so she's getting a pri- private jet to fly her and her husband. Man, talk about the best gig ever. How about her husband? He's not on a no-fly list? Uh, well, I don't mean not oh privately. Not privately. <laughs> but, I mean, he just, I mean, he, you know, he, he did get his master's from... From um, I think it was Georgia Tech on some kind of computer stuff, but he's having a hard time finding a job just because I think those type of real high paying you know jobs are like kind of scarce. But yeah, I think he's looking for like one hundred fifty thousand a year or something. Yeah, like that, that's yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? I mean, he doesn't really have to work, does he? No, no yeah, so he he's not really. Like, no, he doesn't really have to work, but he wants to work as a man. He's an Egyptian sex toy for Tara, is what he is right now. <laughs> exactly what he is. <laughs> say awesome. it again. Say Egyptian it sex toy like, for Tara. Like, what should his business card say? Egyptian sex toy for Tara Club. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm. Um, so we go to TPC. We have dinner. Of course, you know. She has an account there, and so the the real cute waitress, who by the way, on she has the the dark a little curly haired chick. I think yes. she served you and and she Nava. Did. I'm and trying to remember her she's name. She's so cute, Emily. Emily, yes. Oh my god, I'm good. She's so hot, and so she comes with the bill, and Tara goes, just put it on my account. And so then I say to Tara because I'm sitting by her, I go, Tara, let me you know lay down a hundred bucks for the tip or something. Doesn't work that way. She's like, that's, that's she's exactly what she danced. She snapped at me and said, it doesn't work that way. And I go, but then let me give you a little bit of money to, you know, to help with this. She's like, please. Just stop, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Bubba, she just gave you five hundred dollars on Friday feel, for the show. I feel I mean, like, but like, getting I feel it back like, to her. But I feel like, like my interaction with her, Seth, is like, like a Larry David talks to um, uh, uh, Richard Richard Lewis about money. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, you know, like she, my sister's like, please, yeah, stop, just stop, we, just enjoy the day with mom. Don't worry about what it costs. I'm like Tara, you understand the man in me. The uh, the oldest sibling, and I'm the oldest a sibling, and you know I used to be in a financial situation where anytime we would all go out, you know back in the day, Dan, it was I always paid for everything. I got the American Express black card out, bam, bam, bam. I paid for everything, you know. So I had I probably had a ten year run where I paid for everything. There was no question who was getting the bill. Right now it's her turn. And, and Isn't now, it nice to be treated, Bubba? Yeah, it is. So but enjoy it, it but man. it's kind of embarrassing. Nah. As the dude, oh, nah, if you've been shelling it out for years and someone else wants to take a shot, <laughs> shot at it, God bless him. So anyway, my brother's like, listen, if someone wants to give you money, freaking take it. What about this? How you've about been when shelling you... it out your whole life? How about this? What happens when you three, if if you, Steve, and Jay ever end up out mm-hmm. or with family, whatever? Who picks? Like, how does that that? Do you just let Jay pay? Um, no, usually Stephen <laughs> picks it up, and then I get a bill. <laughs> 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 Hold on. pick it up like Steven, a stud, and then all of a sudden Steven will pick it up, and the next thing you know, you got an email saying, "Hey, I need eight hundred. I, I, I need, I need <laughs> hey, hey, daddy, I need eight hundred. Uh, get it to me to you know yep. the next couple of days but before the sun sets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, before you're even home, you got your email. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but he looks like a pimp money? at dinner. So but... money, so <laughs> money, so, so, money. so <laughs> we're uh, so we're watching the Purdue game. It was a great game. Yes, it was. God, that big that big middle guy they got in the middle man, forty it, points. If he could. If he can just get a little bit, a little bit better footwork, he's and a little thicker too, and, and a little thicker. I think he, I know, but I think some of the big boys in the NBA would throw him around a little bit. He doesn't have the NBA game. I mean, now they yeah. ESPN has him slated to go like uh, I think 14th overall. But from what I've been reading, a lot of scouts and coaches are saying that he doesn't have the game to play in the NBA, and he could maybe be like a rotational backup center. Be- and because in, 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 well, it's like in, you said, Bubba, he but, doesn't have the footwork. And well, he's not, he, he, he doesn't have the athletic. footwork. But the other thing is, you know, like he can't like the guy from from uh, San Antonio who's the same height can throw in a three. You know, that guy shoots 50 percent from the three field. This guy's just it. It seems like, Seth, the NBA is going away from that bona fide big man, and now big men can do more than just, you know, like park in the paint and do a Kareem Abdul Jabbar layup. No, I mean, they, they, big men now are, you know, almost guards. I mean, you're big, like Kevin, right? Dur- Kevin Durant's, you know, seven feet tall. Victor Webinyama's seven three. I mean, these what guys- was the guy from Dallas, the white guy? Um, Luca? Dirk? No, no, Dirk. Oh, Dirk, yeah. He kind of he kind of started that era of seven footers that'll take it out wide, didn't he? 
Didn't Dirk kind of start it? Yeah, he was one of the first. Yeah. He was one of the pioneers of the big man can have a touch from out, from out, you know, from three point land. But I mean, now everybody on the floor pretty much has to be able to shoot a three pointer. So, right, right. So, anyway, I watched the Purdue game with, with my sister. And then, so there they went. It was a good game. And, and, and they win. And then she's like, like, I'm ready to go home. You know, it's, it's way, I, I got to get the hell out of there. And she's like, so I give her a big hug, and, and you know, we do our little, you know, our little pleasantries and goodbye, and give, give everybody kisses and stuff like that. And, and Grab Tara, her boobies. And yeah, oh yeah, of course I yeah, tweaked nice. her, tweaked her tees. Oh nice. my god! And Thank then uh, she's like, listen, uh, Tarek, get on the, get him, go to my office, get on the phone, uh, you know, start looking for private jets. Start looking for. She said, "Start looking for private jets." Yes. Oh my, <laughs> that was the objective. Start looking for private jets. Start looking for tickets. Start looking for uh, the nearest hotel to the venue. Maybe we'll walk. Maybe we. I'm certainly we can Uber. Was he taking <clears throat> notes or did he? No, he just went into our <laughs> office and got on the computer. And I was like, so then me and Merch Creek getting our in my little Toyota Camry. I'm driving home. I'm like, it's her Toyota Camry. <clears throat> it is. It, <laughs> it's it, not it's, yours. <laughs> full disclosure: It's Merch Creek's brand new Toyota for, uh, Camry. It's. It is pretty nice looking though no, for a car. No, it's a slick car, I think. So she would get in, and I'm driving. So I'm not even driving. Like, see, the car I'm driving is not even mine. No. But she even validates how you know, Jesus, how how bad. Pimp you are. No, how oh. fuck. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <gasps> Bubba, uh, yeah. thirty eight years on the air. Uh, yeah. so can't get My it right. anniversary. That's how angry he is. How <laughs> effing pathetic I am yeah. driving a you know a forty thousand dollar car that, that I don't even own. That's why no one wanted to take your money at brunch. Yeah. So and then I'm I'm talking to the merch crick. Hold on, did did I hear that right? And yes, Daddy. And she's like, yeah. And I go, she she told Tarek to go in the office, book a private jet, look for tickets, and the club, and, and they're leaving like Friday night because I think the gate, I think the fir, I think Purdue plays what uh, NC State Saturday, and then the big game's Monday, right? Yeah, yeah. sixth and the eighth. Yeah. So the she, Saturday is the first game. So she's looking for tickets on that. She, I bet you. I mean, I got to think booking the jet was probably the easiest thing. Right? Man, I, yeah. I love that first class is beneath Tara now. That's erotic. Well, here, here's the thing. I think she's has to get in and get out. That she don't that doesn't have time to be board like, flight. Or well, I, I don't think she has the flexibility to be you able to pre- wait around three, four, five, eight hours for a flight. Like I think she needs to get out there, watch it, and then get back, you know, because of her business. You know, and I because th- I think this is like the na- I think to the, this is the week that they bring all of their doctors into town and they have like a little like there's a it's there's some kind of big huge thing that, that her business has going on this early next week like Tuesday like at like Tuesday morning. So I think that she has like she may not be able to make that commercially, All right, right? I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, me and my sister's fine. Yeah, private jet, everything like that. It looks like the cheapest ticket so far on StubHub uh for not nosebleeds. Even nosebleeds no, are $700. Said, it's going to be about uh she says she wants 900 bucks. She wants to be lower bowl, yeah. preferably half court. Would so you, well, so what then, do you, well, uh, she wants to be half court about uh, thirty five hundred. There you go. So she'll spend. Damn. Is that now? Is that just for Saturday's game? Yeah, One game just for Saturday's game. Yes. And then what, what would what would Monday be? Probably ten thousand a ticket. Right now they're a little under just because obviously. Uh, People aren't buying them because they don't know what the game's going to be. But uh, the cheapest one. It'd be worth buying. Two, three grand. Yeah. Right now, it'd be worth buying for knowing that you could flip. Exactly. Right? Yep. Yep. I mean, you know. Buy now and flip later. <laughs> That's the right. Purdue, the Purdue got people who don't have these tickets for Monday um, will be scrambling around for them Saturday afternoon if Purdue beats NC State. Yeah. Like right now, the same ticket uh, area. As a 1300 for uh, Monday's game. Yeah, so you just, oh champion- my God, you buy that all day. Yeah. Is the championship game just one game or is it yeah, like just, a nope, best of seven? Just deal? one. Oh, okay. Just one game. So you can get half court Willie yep. for Monday night's game, two tickets for how much? Uh, 1300. A, a ticket. Yes. So call it 2600. Yep. My God, you know those are going to be going for five grand Monday night. Oh yeah. Why wouldn't you just buy them? Now let me. Do they have limitations on on like so that you know scalpers can't like you know? No, the, I mean this is on StubHub, so I mean this is now. Can you whatever. buy them on StubHub and then resell them on StubHub? Yep. Yes. Oh, 
Sure can. I mean, they, so, they can't control whether you just can't go to the game. Yeah, right. What I'm saying I mean, is, like, what? Like, you don't have so to. Bob, what it I'm would saying be a bad is, idea to go ahead and buy those Monday <laughs> tickets now and then flip them Sunday morning. Right, mm-hmm. right. Because they'll yeah. go up, they'll probably double. I was already thinking that, Bubba. Well, let me, let me, I was maybe, already thinking about maybe, texting maybe, Ashley. Maybe, okay. Let me text Tara <laughs> yeah. and say, Tara, I need, to, I need to borrow some money. I got this flim-flam ticket scam going on. Double our money quick. Scam. <laughs> going on. But it's true. Dan, Dan might a, fund a, us. There's, a, there's a <laughs> definitely a sweet spot, and so it looks like you're at it right now when the Saturday game is more expensive than the Monday game. Yeah. Because yeah. no one knows who's going. Well, but then exactly. as soon as all them Purdue and UConn fans are, you know, scrounging for tickets, because they're probably going to be the last I mean, we need to talk standing. privately, okay, yeah. after, after Especially, the Especially, well, if, 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 if Alabama makes an upset in UConn, which probably won't happen, but uh, Alabama had people have a lot of money. Yeah. And they like to watch those well, games. Well, UConn mm-hmm. people have a lot of money. Yeah. yeah, that's true, too. But they've seen it before. Alabama, I mean. Yeah, it's a, it's Has Alabama made it, ever made it to the Final Four? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't think they have. Yeah. Anyway, the final four being here is I have I have an article right here. Oh, watching yeah. Duke was sad oh, last night. Hot. The second half. Oh. What did Duke lose? Oh, yeah, they, oh, they, did. they were winning at the end of the first half, and they came out in the second half like a high school team against a pro team. It's, it was weird. Uh, final four: number one seed Connecticut, number four seed Alabama, number eleven seed NC State, and then uh, number one seed Purdue. It's looking like right now it's going to be Connecticut versus Alabama. And Purdue versus NC State. And it is Alabama's and, first ever Final Four. So let me, like, right now, if you were to, I mean, right now, I would say that, what are they, what's what's Vegas saying? It's going to be Connecticut versus Purdue? Yes. Uh, I can look it up real quick, uh, but I believe Purdue is a five-point favorite, and I believe- Over you, those guys? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that, UConn, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, NC State has been, uh, they were a six and a half point underdog last uh, last week. Or last game, whatever. Sorry, uh, they're, is, they're is gonna, UConn not that good? No, UConn's really good. They're they're beating everybody by over twenty points. They're 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 the strongest team in so, the So, but you said them versus Purdue is what? No, right now, currently, I'm saying for these games, uh, NC State is the underdog to Purdue. I'm looking up the Connecticut. Right. Uh, I didn't know if they did a wishful thinking that if if indeed Connecticut and pull and Purdue would make it, if they have an early line on that or not. I can, I can look at it uh, right now. Uh, UConn is a, a twelve point favorite over Alabama. Oh my God, they're that. Are they? Do they? Are they now? Who do you like? If let's say it's Purdue and Connecticut, does Connecticut kill them? Yeah, UConn's. So a, Tara's a really wasting good team. her money. Nothing would be worse than spending thirty grand to get out there and then come back and you lost. I mean, never, unless, oh I mean unless Alabama when just. When you're uh, flying private, it's like you, your team better win. Yeah, no kidding. My God. I, oh, my God. I'd be sick to my stomach. I mean, the, the North Carolina and Purdue game is going to be really interesting with the big men because uh, NC State has this. Uh, Seth, what was his nickname you called him? Oh, God. Uh, sh- well, he, was, he's like, he looks like the ground mount of rebound, but his yeah, name Jay. is. Uh, Kareem said, Abdu, uh no, never mind. I'm sorry. Send him to me, okay. Lummy. Send him to Talk me. Talking about the fat guy? Yeah. He's, he's a DJ, monster. DJ something. Yeah, he's a DJ, monster. Yeah. DJ, DJ Burns. Burns. DJ Burns. Burns Jr. Oh. Let me send me a DJ Burns gimmick. Now, this is the he's, guy. He's that, got the teeth of, a, that plays, of an angel. And he plays for um, <laughs> NC State. NC mm-hmm. State. And and is he kind of like uh, the America's darling, the 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 guy, the person in the that that's in the Final Four that is getting the most attention player wise? Yeah, and it would be this guy. Yeah, and have it's you also, sent it to me? Uh, yeah, I sent it to you. And it's also because NC State's an 11 seed, and so they're that Cinderella team right now. Right, right. Okay, this now this is the, this is like a highlight for him. Is he a real big dude? Yeah, he is. He's 6'9". Jesus. They've got three guys. But he's like 350. Bouchon and DJ. And then Eby. That guy right there. Off to the races. Up ahead to Joyner. That guy? Yeah, the big guy. I don't know why they're trying to pass. But that right here. The guy, stuff with his hair up right there. Yeah, he's not that big. No, but he can muscle. He's a muscle. What a fuck. If you watch highlights from the Duke game, dude, he destroyed Duke. So is he he more like a Charles Barkley? Yes. Is he a throwback Charles Barkley? Yes. And that's the thing with the Purdue guy is that this guy... Has a lot more muscle, and I can oh. see him pushing around the Purdue guy. So the Purdue guy, who's a little, you know, little is it Zach Eady? <clears throat> yeah, Zach yeah. Eady. Zach Eady, who's not built like DJ. So DJ six nine and Zach Eady seven four. Zach Eady for the uh, Purdue and DJ Burns for. I sent you his highlights from Duke because he did. He did manhandle the Duke. This guys. was last night, right? Yeah. What, was it yeah. not? Rikowski, whatever that guy's name is. The first matchup in Raleigh. 
Marcel was a, a nice difference maker in the victory over Marquette. Kick it out. Burns. He from the out. outside. He drains it. But he is a pleasant kid and loves the game. And so the ED guy, the 7'4 Purdue guy, is not going to be able to muscle this guy around. No. No, because the 7 foot Duke guy couldn't do anything against him. Yeah. Here's the penetrator. Number 30? Yeah. You should buy more cells. Yeah, but 30 is even less thicker than, than, than but, the, the Purdue but guy. But um, I mean, he did get 40 points. Yeah. He was getting muscled by. Uh, he was getting muscled last night. Good job fighting. Just took a little elbow. Watch, I mean, it, watch Duke, him back in it out. Watch him back in it out. Duke's got about four first round draft picks on the team. Yeah, yeah. 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 Duke's good, but that—I mean, it's going to be Duke's a good not, matchup. I mean, Duke's not that good. They got beat. Yeah. All right. So the final four: NC State and Purdue, uh, and then Connecticut and. Um, Dude, I'm here for the women's matchup Alabama. tonight. Yeah, Iowa. I what is it? Yeah, is, it my, is it my Caitlin? Is it my Caitlin Clark? Yeah, Caitlin, against LSU. Yeah, Caitlin Clark. Was it the LSU? same as last year? Yeah, yeah. Where they got and, into it, and then the other the one, one, the the one girl from LSU said, "You can't see me." Angel or, Reese. Yeah, mm-hmm. and are they? She's still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is it? It's so it's basically a redo from last year where LSU beat oh, Iowa, didn't they? Yes, yes, they did. And so they they met in the finals last year. They're going to meet in the semifinals this year, and they hate each other. They hate each other. Uh, let me. But what's weird? I'm sorry. No Powerball. Oh, we're just talking about Tara taking uh, you know nope. private jets and things <laughs> like that. No winner on Powerball. So now it's looking like it's a billion bucks. Are you gonna buy in? Yeah, well, anyway, I am. I, I, yeah, I'm gonna buy twenty bucks worth. Nice. Is it tonight? Is it? Is it tonight? Tomorrow night. Uh, I believe it's uh, tomorrow night. Yeah, actually, let me, night tonight. Let me, hold on. They let changed me. it. It's uh, tonight. Yeah, it's tonight. tonight. Yep. And you have to have your tickets bought by how much? Like ten o'clock. Yeah, it's nine o'clock. I think it's a drawing. Has a cash value of four hundred and seventy-one million. It's the fifth largest <laughs> jackpot in Powerball history. Now is that we're going to the is Purdue that, game? Is that four seventy-one clean? Or yes. is that is that four seventy one and you still got to pay taxes on it? That um, is supposed to be the cash value after taxes. After taxes, yep. four seventy one. Be nice. Oof. That'd be good. I don't even know what I do. I think I just sit in my recliner for a day and just think about what happened. Just happened to me. <laughs> you know the uh, going back backwards. I hate to go backwards, Bubba, but with the LSU thing. LSU just beat UCLA, and prior to the game, there was a scathing article about the the, the matchup. Saying that the LSU were like dirty debutantes versus like the no, Angels now we're, of, now, hold of on, California. We're, I was going to handle this. I was going to talk about this today, and I think it finally came out. And the LSU coach, here she is, right here. Yeah, she was she, pissed. She was acting like a real bitch last week when it was. Yeah, here it is. When supposedly this article was, I guess the Washington Post made several requests to do an interview with her, and so last year she got on. And threw an absolute, last week, last week she got on and threw an absolute fit about how this potential Washington Post interview uh, was was supposedly coming. And that, I guess the Washington Post interview about the head coach of the women's basketball program at LSU, I guess they didn't heed her warning because she said she was going to sue that. Remember she said she was going to sue the hell? Out of uh, yeah, and she'll sue the, but what she doesn't realize is, dumb bitch, is that if you're going to be, if you elect to be a public figure, if you elect elect to be a public figure, the the it, it's really honest to God, it's tough for anybody to slander or defame you. They can virtually say anything they want about you. If it's I mean, patently I mean, false and damaging, and there's no comedic or hyperbole to it, then actually it is actionable. And, but here's the thing, like Falwell versus Flint. You know the the people versus Larry Flint, right? And Jerry Falwell and and Larry Flint and Hustler put put J- Jerry Falwell's mom like in an outhouse giving oral giving oral or something like that as a, as a cartoon deal. Mm-hmm. And the Supreme Court actually ruled the more outlandish and extreme that it, it that, that it is, and the most and the more uh, likely that it could never happen, the more that it's protected. Right. So. It, it's tough for a public figure to be. I mean, ask MJ. Hey, remember, I mean, mean one of the most one of the most popular cases around was you know MJ got mad that I called his wife a whore. Mm-hmm. And, and, like, and I was that her, really hyperbole? Or? Yeah, it was. It was or like was she a dirty yeah. slut. Well, I mean, dirty I, little slut. I bet you she could be. Okay. Well, talk about <laughs> talk, talk about a way to get back, right? Sorry. 
Oh, hey, well, I mean, would you be effing him? I'd I mean, I'd be effing everybody in town but him if yeah, I was I mean, his wife. I mean, yeah. I mean, she, yeah. I don't I mean, really want to bang his me. alter ego, Milton uh, Fledge Cow, whoever's making the crank call from back in the day. <laughs> if you want a deep dive into the Bubba the Love Sponge show from the past, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge show. We'll be back after these words. the gun guy is more motherfucker Let me see how much this bitch makes. Okay. Yes, Carly. John Miller. Yeah. When's that championship game tonight? Uh, LSU play. They play tonight. Yeah, it's to go to the final four. Ten years, thirty-six million. Wow, that's her contract. So she makes three point six million a year. Yeah, that she's the highest paid uh, coach mm-hmm. for women's basketball ever. So the girls are like one week behind the boys. No, no, they'll have their final four. Uh, they'll have the final Sorry, four sets tonight. Days. Who's all? What four are left? Iowa, LSU, USC, Connecticut. Mm. So UConn's got both boys and girls. Yeah, that's kind of fucking unbelievable, ain't it? I feel well. I feel like they have for a while. UConn men's always been good, and then UConn women. Remember with Gorem over like they didn't lose like undefeated for years. years. Oh yeah, in the early two thousands and the late nineties, UConn both teams were always in it. Yeah. Okay. But South Carolina hasn't lost all season, so they're going to be in the they're in the final four right now. They're undefeated. Yeah. When's the last um, college team and men's to go undefeated? Men? I don't know. Bobby Knight, 1976, Indiana Hillary and Hoosiers. Really? Yeah. That long? Scotty May, Quinn Buckner, Kent Benson. I think it'd be, I don't know how the women do it. I just think it's impossible for, for a guy. Well, 1976 is the last time we did it. Well, we did, we sure did do it, all of us. 
big time in Indiana history. I think about it a lot. <laughs> Morning, John Miller, Spencer Spencer. Make sure you subscribe to Bubba Army HQ. Otherwise, Bubba will have to take action. And there's a lot of power behind those short arms. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Now back to the BRN. Did, um... I was talking about my Easter. After we went uh, from the country club, we went and watched the the ball game. And then Tara had like some fancy catered in, like from like Lessie's, something like a bunch of sweets and stuff like that. So I probably pretty much cheated on my diet. I mean, what did you guys do for Easter? Like her 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 in-laws your in-laws or you just yeah. stayed home and said praise jesus no i went to their their in-laws my nephew uh, came down with his kid from california so he uh, he stayed california with us. to florida just just for easter he came a couple of days ago <sighs> okay yeah, jesus to see uh to see my parents but he stayed with us and then we went to my uh, in-laws and then to my parents last night it's always a festive dan time. i mean i think italians uh, they very much celebrate easter did you guys have a big a big soiree with all the with all the heads of the family. Um, what, 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 did, what did the Diacos do? Stephen hosted it, but I didn't go. Literally across the street from your house. Yep. Literally from <laughs> literally, I'm not kidding. From like here to the stop sign down by the Brinks place is how far. Because Dan's got a very large property. My driveway. I mean, <clears throat> right. yeah, I have to walk. Once, he, once so, I go down the driveway, so hold his, on. his house. Is he hosted. A, feet. He hosted a family event. Mm-hmm. That you didn't go to. Yeah. Did your kids go? Yep. Why? Good excuse. Wife. Yes. S- My mom. Jay. Yeah. Shortly. Briefly. But was there? Mm-hmm. Nick, they had some kind of dog Nick, caper. Bella. Um, Bella, Bella. Yes. I don't know if Nick was there. Um, Arlene. Yes. And why didn't you make it? Because I had tummy ache. Oh Jesus. Exactly, Rose. Okay, yes, Seth. exactly. <laughs> okay, Jesus, Seth. Rose, and I, and I, and I, I was throwing up out of both ends. You're throwing up out of your butt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so you can't was, really report as to how the big Diaco <laughs> Easter high spot went, can you? Now, cause not you really, because I wasn't there. I had, I got a plate later on in the night. The lasagna was good, and um, I was hungry, but I just did. I couldn't stand up straight. Right. I, I just was. You know, it was. Well. I know when, you, when it happens at the same time, like, you got to make a decision. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Your entire family. Your entire, fa- your entire oh, family. You sit and you have a trash can. Your you. entire family's across the street, mm-hmm. not, you know, across town 
Cry, no, no, across the street, mm-hmm. and you don't even, you know, step in and say hi and give. Mm-hmm. You didn't even want to. You didn't even give your mom a hug and a kiss. Nothing. It didn't feel good. Didn't feel good. Tummy ache. What a pussy. Yeah, I called you. You didn't call me back. What about you, Anna? You. I got nothing. What did you do? <laughs> went for a run. There. Just that's it. Went for a run and then I went for a bike ride. Did you went for a run? When were you? Pre- were you praising Jesus? Did you go to any? Any? Uh, like, nope. <clears throat> no. Just went for a run. No special dinner. No nothing. Just made a salad. Seth, what about you? Did, now, did you? Did Jews? Uh, do they celebrate oh, Easter? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Seth and not me. Yeah. <laughs> it's called so. It's called Passover, not Easter. Yeah, it's, well, it's a, a similar, different holiday. It's a different holiday, but it's the same time of year because they all group them together. Passover isn't. I think this year until this, like the third week of April or and something. And what do you got? And now? it lasts a week, no. and you can't have any leavened bread. And when you're a kid, that's a very hard time when you roll up with a matzo sandwich and everyone calls you a freak. Now, hold on, let me ask I you. It's like an uncrustable. Let me ask you a question. No, it's not. <laughs> it's just so, a giant cracker. Pa- pa- Passover, <laughs> one, one, one of the, again, this is this part of the Jew, the Jew Jewish or religion that I just can't get through. They, they put all these parameters. It's, the, it's the, one religion that puts the most parameters on food. They got, not really. They got food rules. Uh, so and, and during Passover, Muslims have the for, same thing. Okay, well, it's I, called halal. I, I don't want to be ahead. a Muslim, but I like to be a Jew. Oh, okay. So I'd be like, you can't eat. You can only eat crackers and so. So if I wanted to have can't like have a anything peanut butter sandwich, I have to have a peanut butter cracker sandwich. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on like special. Do you crackers. Re- now, now, Seth, do you adhere to these rules when when you know like I got to think that probably in the Jewish holiday scheme of things you kind of pick and choose as to what you participate in which you know what's cool cooler and won't give you anxiety because not being able to eat bread for a week i think would give me anxiety (laughs) how about you i do i try to do the fast during uh yom kippur where you're just not supposed to eat all day and all from i don't know sundown to sundown yeah Mm -hmm. but uh i don't know not eating bread and all that stuff that's that's i'm cool with eating bread yeah it's a week so yeast doesn't make you closer to god by avoiding yeast uh, is that it, is that what they're the 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 premise behind it? No, well, it's, I mean, all it's more symbolic. It, it's supposed to make it closer to God. All of it's right. supposed to make it closer yeah. to God. But just you know whether or not I can be close to God. I can be I can be close to God eating a quarter pounder. Yeah, you, know, you don't eat, eat meat. You don't eat pork. You don't eat. You're meat. like man, God. I never felt closer to you. This double quarter pounder with no pickles and onions for good as hell. You no, know, God could make something that good. That's right. Speaking of which, this is this is uh, very sad, and I can I can only imagine. I, I can't I can't even imagine what our good friend John from Precision Laser is going through. You know, we've John, he's Bubba Army royalty. Oh, yeah. He's just I love the guy. Been with us from day one. Uh, his mother passed in the night in, oh, in the, middle, oh, in the no. middle of the night. So. I'm sorry, I just, I'm such a mama's boy and, uh, you know, I, I just, I can't even, and my mom's getting older as Arlene's getting older, you know, you know, Dan, you, I, how old is Arlene? Like 84. Boy, she's way, see my mom's 77. So no, no, I'm sorry. My mom just turned 78. So Arlene looks good as hell for 84. Thank you. But you know, at, she's the, busy. at the end of the day. Um, I don't know about Elise, how old, how old how old Elise is, but at the end of the day, just the natural progression is that you 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 lose your parents before you lose yourself. Like you know you. Well, parents don't want to have to bury their kids. No, so no I know. Horrible. So, but just I'm saying, like I I don't know what the statistics are, but it's probably well into the 90s. And the fact that you know young you you lose your mom or dad before you die usually usually old people die first right and, yeah. and and the worst thing ever is for a a parent to have to bury their child that obviously is something very traumatic or 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 something like that happened but uh, i couldn't even begin to uh, fathom life without my mother like oh my god she's such my mom is such my world that i will just and and dan i think arlene is very much your world <laughs> Absolutely, yes. And so, I mean, let me. Are you closest to your mom or your dad? I'm my dad now. Oh, your dad now? Yeah. Was this, this recently? Oh uh, yeah, see, yeah, five, five, five years, ten well, years. And, and what has what has changed the the? He's, he's actually pretty cool. I mean, growing I mean, up, he used to beat my ass. Now uh, he's kind of just a cool guy to drink a beer with. Really? Yeah, like sports, back in the day. And, <laughs> back in the day, he used to beat my ass. Yeah, now so he's a cool guy yep. to gamble and drink beer with. Yep, that's, that's exactly. Song. All right. <laughs> 
All right, Anna. Now, obviously, I know. I mean, I know. I know you. You're you're very much closer to your father. I'm a bit closer to my dad, but I'm getting pretty close to my mom. Talked to her for an hour last night. My really? dad was here last weekend, actually. He was. Mm-hmm. Did he have a good time? He did. Yes, I tried to organize a a lunch with a friend he hadn't seen in forty years. And no, the guy a lot of canceled. times though, when you're oh, oh, oh really? Dick. Yeah, my dad just gave me his number. He's like, "Can you organize this?" And I said, "No problem." So I picked a place, you know, time that was convenient for sure. him and he hadn't seen him since 1984 they lived in israel together and he bailed he canceled without even canceling my dad was speaking to him the morning of and he's like oh yeah i can't come like he didn't even go out of his way to tell us that he couldn't make it he like, just what like, made it like a-hole. like like just kind of like a matter of fact yeah he's like deal. oh yeah by the way i can't come he insinuated there was a lot of traffic but he didn't cancel and then that morning he was like yeah i'm not coming there's a lot of traffic uh, so anyway, John from Precision, my heart goes out to you, my friend. Um, you know, Seth, I know, I know. Who are you closest with, your father or your dad? I mean, your, <laughs> your father or your dad, <laughs> or your mom or your dad, or is it about the same? Man, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I think my dad has a hard time getting close to anybody, and then uh, my mom and I are just, I think, just too similar to where we push each other away. So you guys are always battling. I, I got a better relationship with the Easter Bunny, I think. You think you do? Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's about the same, right? So anyway, uh, my heart goes out to you, John, my friend, and uh, I know it's it's a very uh, nothing I can say can make it better. By the way, I'm going to my mom's shuffleboard. Tournament, Lummy. Nice. I'm sorry, her game. She's got a game uh, Thursday at noon at the at the at the Groves Shuffleboard Court. You taking the Crown Vic? No, I'm gonna probably take the Camry. But then you then once you you go then you go get the then you you you, you when you go to the shuffleboard ter- game you got to be in a golf cart that way you can park all around the shuffleboard oh. otherwise you get to sit in a bench. So if I go to my mom's house a little bit early, like 11:45, pick up the golf cart. Then I can, you know, be right there. You know, is this an event we could do like uh, the cash cube with the cream machine out there? No, and, I think uh, these old people. You put them in the cash cube, they'd fall over. <laughs> you literally, they literally would throw them against the side of the wall, and they couldn't do anything. <laughs> By the way, as we re- continue to refine our cash cube, we had a couple of dry run throughs. Yeah, uh, Friday was it Friday, Lummy? Yes, it was. Yeah. Were we live? Yeah, on a, uh, on tw- uh, X on, yeah. on Twitter X. Yes. Anyway. Um, I think the merch crick. Well, anyway, uh, Rhett gets in there with a hoodie that has pockets, and he learns this, he, and he has this technique where he puts his arm. It doesn't hit the sides, but it creates kind of like this dam, and all this money just starts piling against his arm. Then he takes it and throws it inside inside of his inside of his hoodie pocket. He he made a thousand seventy five in thirty seconds. So, Lummy and I made some adjustments. I mean, because we got to do these dry. Of you course. Know, we, you know, Who would have lost their ass? You, you took the Chesney. money out? No, no. We, no, we just made, made like different rules. So we put you the merch. close your eyes. We put the merch crick in there. And she didn't have a hoodie on, obviously. And I'm like, listen, you cannot put your arm. You cannot touch the sides. And, and you, you know, and so, and she only got what? Three. Yes, I think it's like three, four hundred bucks. Yeah. So that that's kind of what I'm hope. That's kind of <laughs> what I hope the average person can grab out of there. It's about three or four hundred bucks. What was the merch crick stuff in them down her cleavage hole? <clears throat> um, yeah, amongst uh, other places. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. So anyway, let me. We're debuting the cash cube, the Diaco Law ten thousand dollar cash cube. We're debuting it at the Kenny Chesney concert. I can't wait. Yeah. Air Constable, hundred dollars, cash. Here, thank he you. Dropped it off. Here, he, he did. <laughs> yes, he just dropped it off this morning. Hell yeah. He just dropped. Hold on. He so said, this guy uh, named keep Eric fighting Ke- and winning. So this, guy, I think Merch Crick just actually texted me and said that she had to go outside to the gate and pick up some cash. Boy, this is a Sopranos operation, isn't it? So yes. awesome. He's he drove bring, down from Jacksonville. He, he hold on. Was he in? I, I hope the? that he had Tampa business. I hope so too. That, that he just didn't drive from Jacksonville, which cost probably sixty bucks in gas to drop me off a hundred. Well, he didn't. Have, yeah, he doesn't do the electronic uh, transfer stuff. So there's Thank only you, way Eric. he can get it to us. Thank you, Eric. Now, wow. is he trying to qualify for Barb? Do you know? I mean, his letter just said, "Keep fighting and winning." He's gonna drive down here 26 more times. Drop off a hundred. So this is the LSU 
uh, women's basketball coach, and she's been the coach now for how many years? Like 20? A while. Yeah, a long time. She's recognized, I think, besides the guy that used to coach UConn and oh, the, Gino Ariema? The, the legendary UConn women's basketball coach, who I think just most recently retired, not too long ago. And then the other... The Tennessee coach. At Summit? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. yeah, and then the Tennessee coach. I think these are probably the three most popular coaches ever in the history of women's basketball. And one of them is this chick from LSU. T-shirt will, 50 on the cash app. And, and she... You know, Dan, don't you just like how people throw around the defamation, I'm sorry, defamation, slander, how they people just think they throw that around when most people don't have any idea the how hard it is to prove that when you're a public figure. Yes. Like it's virtually impossible. And then you'd have to go on. And if a jury would find that the Washington Post did slander or, or malice you, you then have to prove damages. How many endorsements did you lose how many you know people just clowning you on the streets and knowing that you're a tyrant that you is aren't damages so a lot of people want to say i'll sue you for slander and defamation do you know how hard that is to prove yes. with a public figure it's very difficult ask mj kelly right <clears throat> So, so, so this is just her fourth year at LSU, by the way. Oh, it is. What was yeah. she before that? Uh, Baylor for a year, and before that, Louisiana Tech. He has gone to try and put a hit piece together. This reporter has been working. Now she's kind of the Bobby Knight of women's basketball, where she does. She's super strict, right? Super and stiff, very much a hard ass. Yes. And I guess the Washington Post was going to do an article or did an article that she is a hard ass. That, you know, she divides her players. That hates uh, overweight women, uh, lesbian women, and... Lesbian. I think there was something else that she... She did. hates... <clears throat> that's like her That's whole what she's team, being I accused thought. of in, right. the, in the piece. I've a story about me for two years. After two years of trying to get me to sit with him for an interview, he contacts LSU on Tuesday as we were getting ready for the first round game of this tournament with more than a dozen questions. Demanding a response by Thursday, right before we're scheduled to tip off. Just say, dear Washington Post, I'm busy right now. Get back to me after the season. Boom. Right? Yeah. That, would, that would be very, I think most people could digest that. Well, Most people would be like, hey, she's real busy right now getting her team ready. Uh, if you're going to do this big ass high spot article on her. You know, do it afterwards, or are they just trying to get her right before the final four because that's when she'll have the most eyeballs on her. I think when you have you know women coming forward that are saying that they got treated differently, you know, once they got found out that you know they were lesbians or something like that, I think, and I think it's Is that the be, premise of this. No, I mean, there's a few things in there. Uh, just how she was. Uh, I don't know if there, I don't think there's any there's any racial stuff. It's just she was just very very hard on are on you some of the people. Oh you yeah, mean? yeah. She was telling because she coached Brittany Griner at Baylor. Uh, she would tell all the uh, student athletes to stay quiet about their sexual orientation and uh, you know delete things on social media. Well, she blah, probably blah. was trying to be discreet, be have di some class yeah, and honor, yeah. and, and privacy. I mean, she might want to, you know, she might want to. The you, players, you, the you pl can look at that two different ways. Where you can like, I'm trying to look out for you so that you don't get a wrath full of hate and trolls, and your sexuality is your own personal business. And 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 you're, at that point, you're it's coming from a from a position of trying to help, or uh, or you can be, I guess, maybe a little you know dictatorish about it, and mm -hmm. it comes from a position of not caring. Well, Baylor is a Christian university, so she was saying that that might hurt recruiting and uh, funding from the uh, boosters. Uh, boosters this yeah. was a ridiculous deadline that LSU and I could not possibly meet, and the reporter knew it. It was just an attempt to prevent me from commenting in an attempt to distract us from this tournament. It ain't going to work, buddy. Unfortunately, this is part of a pattern that goes back years. I told this reporter two years ago that I didn't appreciate the hit job he wrote on Brian Kelly, and that's why I wasn't going to do an interview with him. After that, the reporter called two former college coaches of mine and left multiple messages 
that he was with me in back- you know what? Brian Kelly does suck. He does. You <laughs> lost me at, you know what, bitch? You lost me at Brian Kelly. Well, you know, the other thing was, is, you know, that there's a really nasty article written about her in L.A. when they were playing uh, UCLA. And it was really talking. They, they called her team the Dirty Debutantes. And if you Google that, all you see is, like, filthy porn. Speaking of so. which, um, <laughs> um, Le- we got Lamar Odom <laughs> and Caitlyn Jenner now have officially launched a new podcast. And I'm listen. I'm not. It's an interesting duo. I'm not. Huh. Not trying to. Tap that. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to say that I'm sexually attractive. Tap that. To Kate to Caitlyn Jenner, huh. but I will tell you this that that good. is that that she looks pretty damn good. Oh my dude, get out of here. Especially, especially from what they had to work with, and that was one of the most manliest men on the face of the earth at one time. Back in 1976, at one time, the greatest male athlete and the the greatest overall male athlete in the entire world was Bruce Jenner. And when you can take that guy, who that's a pretty manly description, is it not? Mm-hmm. I'm yes. the I am the most athletic person in the world. The greatest athlete in the world. Right. Overall, when you when you incorporate strength, re- running, jumping, you know. That's what the, 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 the decathlon is supposed to define the best all around athlete yeah. right. in the world. May not be the maybe not might be the fastest in the mile. May not throw the shot put the farthest. May not throw the javelin the farthest. May not run the twenty six mile mile ma- marathon the farthest. But if you take everything in consideration, scores you know good on all of it, making them you know the greatest athlete in the world. So I got to tell you, man. I don't know who Caitlyn Jenner's plastic surgeon is. We have one here in the studio, but wasn't me. But I, I know it wasn't you. But she looks like a woman, and she looks attractive. I appreciate her effort. I do. But, but what are we? Are we? What are you talking about? But I sent you. Do you <laughs> what, do you mean, what do you mean? What am There's I? There's ta- nothing even remotely close to this looking like a woman or even being attractive. But I, I sent you for fifty for sixty. No, so, she's like seventy something. Yeah, for uh, what'd you send me, Lummy? Uh, the preview, like they put it okay. out. It's All right, like cool. Got it or you don't got it. Okay, physical. All right, well, okay. That's what she looks she's like. She's seventy four, by the way. She's seventy four. Gonna be seventy five this year. So, Seth, you, uh, you might come on, you, Seth, you might, you, you might, this be, looks fire. You might be correct. Thank you. Got it or you don't got it. Okay, physical talent. Um, you can improve on it, but if you don't got it, you don't got it. All, yeah. I can, all I can see when I when I watch Caitlyn, all I can think of is Bruce. Yeah, that's okay. But <laughs> mine, and I mean all the greats like yourself and like yourself, just yeah. great competitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's oh. not just the competition. Yeah. You know, and beating it, it's doing everything. I mean, Caitlyn might be the best of both worlds because you got a you know a man's perspective and competitiveness and athleticism in a woman's body. A fake woman's body, but a woman's body. Bubba, I think you might need some glasses. I didn't say. Uh, listen, I, I just, I just. <laughs> I mean, especially on that angle, it's like a alien face there. I told Seth he was right. I was wrong <laughs> on the blast ability. Okay? Why is everybody's last ditch project to podcast? I, what? Uh, why is everybody's last ditch effort to stay relevant to podcast? Oh, I don't know. And it just to me, it, it befuddles me as to the tr- I, like everybody's, and, and 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 most people don't know how to do interview based conversational based content and it's like let's just get a hotel room throw three or four microphones and some cameras up and call it a podcast and you're right it's like it's almost like it's the last ditch effort for somebody to stay relative you really are it's it, it, i don't know what what that used to be what the last ditch thing used to be for a person to stay reality relative. shows probably i don't know it seems like podcasting is now you're dead on Perfect. Nuts things he said. <laughs> and, and and you get some people that are very untalented that get huge breaks. Like 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 these two nerd dudes. I forget what they they interviewed Hogan, they interviewed Flair. Oh yeah. And they're just a couple of regular nerd dudes. They're just some nerd dudes. I don't know what it's called. I mean it's a really popular podcast. Yeah. But they're like, mm-hmm. it's it's insulting to us that, that that really know how to do radio or, you know, long form monologue content. 
It's it's an, it's it's embar- it's I don't know. It's a slap in our old school faces. What the, like, like- I don't want to hate on anybody that's like you know cutting through and making it work. But I mean, is this podcast going to be around in two or three years? <laughs> no, I, no, I don't know. Out of this world, insane. Did you get me that fight? Ooh, he's pretty good, man. Oh, yeah. All right. What happened that night when you had the traumatic brain injury? When I woke up from my coma. They were telling me that I probably never walk. Traumatic boy. When I woke up from my nose job. It was <laughs> Holy hell. Holy hell. Wow. All right, so I got to go into words, and I, I watched this yesterday, and it, there's a long form of it, and then there's a short form, form of it. Um, Bill Maher's opening monologue um, from his show, I think it might have been, was it, is this show on Saturday nights on HBO, Lummy? Oh, uh, Yeah. Uh, the Bill Maher Show, which has really been a very long tenured, like what, 15, 20 years on HBO? I mean, it's been going, I mean, you know. Yeah, he's changed the name a couple of times, but yeah, it's been going for it's been a while. 20, and, 22 and, seasons. And I, I've met Bill a few times. I've had him on the show a few times. He seems like a real dick. <laughs> um, he's not He's not a dick. He's, <laughs> yeah. he, he's, he, just, he just doesn't, he just doesn't, he just is a matter of fact. Doesn't pussyfoot around things. Right. You know, I like Bill Maher. Was that Bill Maher with with Ro- Roseanne? Was that the, that was that? The, 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 I think he did. I think he did do with. I think yeah, he did it was do awkward so. with real awkward sort of. Anyway. like she wanted a drink, he wouldn't give her a drink. Yeah, the podcast. Yeah, the podcast. You that mi- was that. That y- was him. You might, Dan, take your pants off and start masturbating feverishly when you when when you hear B- Bill Maher's take on COVID. Just another Monday morning. Um, and then the long form version of it, Lummy, I think he gets into like, you know, the bridge and he gets into Oh, he gets down some rabbit holes. And some immigration and a whole nine yards. Oh. But Bill Maher, oh yeah, you it's a must watch on a but the he there's a five minute and eleven second second clip that he pretty much I think I think the whole thing's called um uh, what what's it called? Stop being stupid, or I forget what the whole is. It real time with Bill Maher? Yeah, well, yeah, that's the main show. Oh, here you go. Yeah. Here you go. The the, the the it was titled his monologue. You know, he has new he has a segment on his show called A New Rule, and it's oh. like if America or or society should make a new rule, and in, and he wades through what he thinks the new rule should be and so this this week's new rule was stuck on stupid talking about how our country is stuck it's it's nine minutes and 15 seconds long i'd love to play it all <clears throat> maybe i will let me play it all for today's after show but i don't think i can play it all on the morning show just time sensitive i think there's a little bit of language too but and it, yes yeah. and there's a little bit of language but i think the five minute and 11 second breakdown of covid was absolutely, positively what Dr. Dan Diaco was screaming. Absolutely was, was, was not only our doctor's position, but our us as a show's position on COVID um, and to the point where we even got suspended from a few of our platforms for having what now looks like we were right. We were right. Anti-vaxxers, let this thing her- herd immunity. You know, uh, uh, Ivy Mectrin. Uh, you know that those people. Dan Dan was investigated by a medical agency at potentially suspending his medical license because Dan was a doctor that was going against WHO guidelines publicly on the show. When really, Dan was right. The Bill Maher, the Bill Maher monologue, which you, which you guys will love. We'll do that next. It's the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Want to listen to the show on demand and on the go? Enlist today at BubbaArmyHQ.com and sign up and start listening. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this. So we didn't have, we didn't have to kick off any strangers. I don't think this year. Last year we had to kick a stranger off. Some 
fuck you, crazy woman. Worst. I didn't get home from Sebring. Yes, uh, Saturday. Just got, just locked it all up. Up here to the ski pole, jumping on the west side. Frederick, Jay Gator, what it do? Iggy, that's funny. I'm gonna get a couple of these packages out today. Some of the stuff. Yeah, it was really funny. It was like a year ago they were doing that. <laughs> I think that should be everything. I think that's the way. That's the wrong way. That's the we could paint. What up, Blunger? I wonder if she still has her cane in. I don't know. I thought she went all the way. Mm, I don't think she did. She but I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> she doesn't talk about it. There's, there's Bruce. What's up, Longwood? Still have a. Sorry, Google. I'm trying to quit coffee. Huh? Gosh, man. You gotta Google that. It's easier to skip on the weekends. Still have his penis. According to 2020 recap, Kim, Kate, and Jenna. She underwent final surgery. Oh, she did. Oh, wow. So she can't sit her own balls anymore? Is that funny? She confirms it. That's a Temporal arthritis. And it's that's pretty rare. Hmm. No, David Slade. I'm not private right. ones. What up, Gary? What up, Dumb Panic? It's Organic Gene. <laughs> It's, there's like I said that at the beginning when the vaccine was coming out, as the vaccine information became more more accessible, I started saying even those people are probably not going to have a wonderful outcome. But again, you know, I'm trying to be measured in my protest against it. <coughs> but you know, the excess mortality, <coughs> the jump that we saw, <laughs> Correspond with the vaccine, not with. You got it, Nate. Virus. Good seeing you, man. I appreciate it. So, Director Steve. And. You know, we have the. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put some more stuff up probably uh, today and tomorrow, Jay. I got a lot. It's just one and two dollar cards, but. I got to just put them up. All cause mortality was 13 standard deviations. <clears throat> with people who got vaccinated. <clears throat> Thanks, Pippi. Don't be mad. I'm not here all week this week, though. It's literally impossible. Not a couple days. 13 deviations. deviations. Is that Don't hold all it all against me. Yeah. Uh, Grouper Lips, Nick the Gun Guy's got your L way. What's up, Spencer Spencer? He held me up at gunpoint at a 7 Eleven. What up, Yenzer? What's up, Gang Gene? Thanks, Sako. We'll get through this, Pippi. Don't worry. I still got podcasts coming out somehow. That's interesting, Dan. I'm sorry to hear that. What's up, you snake in the grass, Jay Bowler? 
And it's easier to rotate screens and just stare at both of them at the same time. No, I don't understand. <clears throat> that rugged, rugged white male from the world. Where am I getting? What up, D M S? If you want to get it, come and get it. Just the sign of the D M S S S S. So sucky, the other stuff. How are you? You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. After the show, make sure to check out BubbaArmyHQ.com. It's all things Bubba 24-7. And now back to the BRN. This uh, show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Again, the Bubba the Love Sponge Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com. A lot of us want to try to find more time to do what we like, but we can't. We start coming up with excuses. The best way to squeeze in that special thing into your schedule is to know just how important it is to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so that you can do a lot more of it. If we're, uh, Or if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and then you can switch to therapists at any time for no additional charge. They make it really, really easy for you. Learn to make time for what makes you happy, and it all starts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com forward slash B-E-T-L-S. That'll get you 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R, BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com forward slash B-E-T-L-S. Uh, here is the um, a, a, a portion of Bill Maher's longer monologue that I would suggest everybody go back. Let me. Did I retweet it? Did I retweet it? In yes, a, you did. I did the enti- the big one. Uh, I don't know. About the, the, yeah. I, think, I thought it was just the clip. All right, I need to find the big one and retweet it. You can go to our Twitter, which is at the Bubba Army. Which, by the way, that's where we live everywhere. Whether it's Rumble, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitch, whether it's X, whether it's Instagram, whether I think our TikTok is the one, the only odd man out, is it not? Yes, Lummy? it is. Yes. Because, however, we got yeah. messed up. What is it? Bubba, uh, like underscore it's the underscore Bubba underscore Army. Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. That's how we keep things paid. All, all at the Bubba Army. We appreciate you so much. No other radio show has this type of monetization template and can pull it off, but we do. We can live on our digital and pick up some scraps on terrestrial. That's the, that's the way we're doing it. Dude, and how about this? I met Nick the Gun Guy at a 7-Eleven Friday night, and I got two Taylor Swift Stanleys to give to Phoebe and little Sethy, and now they think that I'm the man all because of the Bubba Army. It right. all helps out, whether it's money exactly. or gifts. Right. So, again. So, you got, would you say Taylor Swift cards? Taylor no. Swift, Stanley's. Stanley's. Who, no, who's the guy who did that? Nick, Nick the, the gun, gun guy. guy. So Nick the gun guy, who has, by the way, gifted me some unbelievable stuff. Just he's to the know, best. It, it, he's just such a good dude. We he got is. so many good dudes. T-shirt, Will, and just, 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 just so many good dudes. Nick loves the kids, though. Like he, he got my daughter uh, the Royal Rumble chair when he went. So we had that, and there was a bunch of autograph stuff with it, and championship belts. So of course, so. you know, Seth doesn't come rolling up to his family like any great Bubble Army member provided such items. He just completely takes complete responsibility for it. Hey, look what Daddy brought in to Taylor Swift Stanleys. Well, they, I mean, they, I said I had to go meet Nick the Gun Guy at 7 Eleven. I mean, they, they knew. I mean, they knew that he was providing the presents, but. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, you know. No, I no, I give the credit, but I go, hey, it's, you know, Daddy's friend. That's right. Daddy's friend and Daddy's, and bigger yet. You, Bubba's brand, yes, right. I explained that Un- to my Un- daughter, Uncle Bubba's brand. <laughs> yes, don't let you know. Don't let me get the short end of this. Never, stick. never. Little Sethy needs to know how important I am to this whole overall equation now, too. She does. Well, she's got that blanket that you gifted her, you yeah. know, a few months ago. Right, right. Meanwhile, Lummy's kid hates me. 
absolutely hates me. No, oh. no, I don't pick up one, Bubba. I don't put it on hold. It doesn't go through. Oh, it doesn't? No. Okay, I'm sorry. So, Lummy, your kid hates me. No, he Apps, loves you. Lummy. Loves Merch Crate, too. Lummy. Well, Lummy. That's nice boobs. Yes. <laughs> That's Lummy. really love for your, Dr. Dan. Your kid is wild, and he hates me. He's coming around to it. He knows that oh, you. Wow. Really, he, Bubba, he knows that you're the one that helped Merch Crick, uh, so and he loves Merch Crick. Why? Why does he hate you, Bubba? You I don't think? know. Why he do you just think? hates me. Like I go, I, go, I go to hold him, and he's like, ah, ah, like, like I can't even hold him. But do like, you want I, a guy like, picking you up? No. He wants a Merch Crick pick it because Bubba yeah, grabs what, what him guy, from Merch Crick. Yeah. What guy wants he's a what, what up baby wants a up? big guy to pick him up? They want girls with boobs that smell good. Okay. Great. <laughs> Thanks. Bubba smells good. He does smell Dan's good. Dan's projecting. Alpha. Alpha. Thank you. Bye. Don't Bye bring it up, Alpha. Alpha. Don't bring it up, Alpha, unless I bring Get it Caitlin up. Jenner don't, to pick don't, him up. Don't, don't, don't try to <laughs> butter me up with an Alpha high spot. Okay, guys, please. Do, do you Sorry. try to pick him up by the skin behind his neck? I mean, no, I mean, shut up. I'm getting ready to co-sign with you from about <clears throat> three years ago. Dr. Dan <laughs> almost lo- Honest to God, you guys don't listen. A lot of people don't understand. Only Dan and Jay and Steve would understand how touch and go there were a few portions of Dan's life because of this program Steven and, the, and, yeah. and, be, and because of Dan's opinion of COVID and Dan's treatment of COVID and Dan's very, very vocal opposition of what our government was slinging got. I mean, Dan, I think it's, you can retro back now. I think the statute, you, first of all, you got through it all. Yes. But there were a few times that there were a couple of very powerful bodies of you know governmental bodies that were thre- basically threatening to take your law your your legal your your medical license away from you yes i was getting it from three different directions i was getting it from insurance companies i was getting it from the uh, the, uh, the 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 boards the boards of medicine right and i was the getting it at home i was getting i was getting it from the pharmacist and i was getting it at home from steven Oh, really? Steve's like, why are you sticking your neck out? Why are you sticking your neck out? I'm like, because I'm a human being, and everyone's getting screwed in this whole world, and I feel like I'm the only one that understands reality, and this is a bizarre world that everyone's now, was there any this more weird th- Kool-Aid. W- w- and, and, I got, and, and Steve, that always tries to err on the, on, on the safe side nowadays, I think... He just wanted you to like kind of conform with the way reality, I'm um, the way, you know, what society is treating this and just shut your fat mouth up and stop make it stop rearing your loud mouth head because it's causing a lot of heat for you. So much heat that it could, you know, be catastrophic in your profession. Yes, right, he's right. like, don't stick your head above the trench. You're going to get it blowed off. And then, and the other thing he was worried about, Bubba, was also your brand and your franchise and your monetization. And he didn't want my opinions to dis- disrupt you financially. Yeah, and you know, which it did. Which I'm sorry that it did. And no, you made up for it, Dan. Please. I mean, those 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 envelopes you give me, that works. It really does. That's how we keep this show on, Dan. You know, just Dan and Jay give me envelopes. And uh, that's how we keep this show on. We have all these fake names. Like there really isn't an Iggy McGillicuddy. There's not a Heather Wiz. It's all me. It's all. It's a. Bit, it's, it's a Asian click farm that we got going on. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, Dan just sends them like forty grand a month, and then they just you know just make it look like it came from Joe from the West Side, right, Lummy? No. Oh, there's yeah. no Scotty Landers. Nope, there's none. no Cable Dog. There's no. There's not even a John Costica. It's fake. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's Dan's new made up, you know, alter ego is John Costica, the guy that gives the most money out. Well, I've seen pictures on Facebook. How far are we taking this? Oh, I mean, they take it far. Okay, to call, right. it costs the Diacos a lot of money to keep this that's show. That's all funny. AI uh, generated. Yeah. Photos. That's all. Yeah, it takes a lot. It's, okay. it's, it's, it takes a lot of money to keep this show going. And uh, thank you, Dan, for the big checks that you're right. You're welcome. <laughs> so anyway, I'm I'm what Dan. You guys don't understand, man. We got as a show suspended a few times about how Dan's opinion of COVID. We got suspended a few times based on Dan's treatment of COVID. Dan got on the air and said, hey, it's Dr. Dan Diaco. And I don't believe that you need to get a vaccine in your arm with a kicker of whatever. I believe that you need to. And Dan, I think we can talk about it now. But you had kind of a, what was your, and I know that you continued to tweak your special formula as COVID evolved, but your, what was your initial, and was it deoxycycline, zinc, ivy What was it? 
Well, I, it, I, it evolved. It evolved. That's what at I first, said. I know, I, I know that I, it didn't, didn't end up what it right. started, but when it you started, first, when COVID first hit March of 2020, and you were getting your friends and your family that are picking up COVID, and me inclusive, what was it? It was a Z pack and hydroxychloroquine. With a steroid nebulizer kicker, if you didn't get better in the first two or three days, plus that z- zinc and, and and vitamin D, was it, it wasn't ivermectin from day one. No, no, I didn't start using ivermectin until about a year into it because right. you couldn't find any data on it. They anything that had anything to do with ivermectin was repressed. All right, so that you had like a hundred out of a hundred success rates there. Right, and then that evolved into I, I think incorporating uh, ivy mectrum and right. deoxy deoxycycline. Right, because there was a there was a false study that said that uh, that hydroxychloroquine and a Z pack would cause a cardiac arrhythmia, which was completely false. And they started, you know, vilifying the hydroxychloroquine to the point where you couldn't even get it at one point. It was almost impossible to get. And so, you know, the and standard so government, look- the government was saying, go get vaccinated, go get tested, have them, you know, nose, stick a swab halfway up your brain. If you got it, go get vaccinated. And then what was it? What was this, the medicine that, that the government was suggesting? Well, at the very beginning, if you got hospitalized, they were suggesting remdesivir. Yeah, which, rem, which, remdesivir. Which, which you can ask Alex Stein about remdesivir. He's not a big fan of it. Killed his mom. Yes. And so um, they, the, the narrative was designed to destroy any real therapies so they could justify the emergency use authorization of the vaccine. So we evolved. Dan's concoction evolved. We would get on the air and talk about his success of his concoction, which was not the norm of what the WHO has decided. We also, Dan was also saying things like masks are stupid. They're not going to help you. Mm-mm. The only thing that will work will be herd immunity. Um, you know, these these respirators and ventilators that we're making, we actually, as a country, we actually, there was a time of period, correct me if I'm wrong, where I think the big three car manufacturers stopped production of their vehicles and they turned their plants into ventilator uh, manufacturing machines. Mm-hmm. And they are, there are hundreds of thousands of ventilators somewhere in a in a New York warehouse that they never needed. Yep. In fact, there's Ferrari ventilators. Italy did the same thing with Ferrari. You want one so bad, don't you? I sure do. I want to die on a Ferrari vent. So, so let me, uh, hold on. Uh, Hello. You're on the air. Hello. Hey, Bubba. Yeah, I can hear you. This is uh, 200. Tuttle's mom's only got a little bit left. Oh, really? Okay, I'll I'll get on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm so sorry to do this to you on the air. I was trying to get you off. That's okay. I'll 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 th- thank you. You know what? Thank you for the information. Uh, hello. Hey, Bubba, how you doing? This is uh, B96 Tony. Hi, B96 Tony. How are you? Uh, good. When I had COVID, I went to the pharmacy to go get my script for Mister Diaco, who. Who's Mr. Diaco? Oh, no. Hold on, buddy. Hold on, hold on. Oh, sir, sir. Yeah, he have as much that. homage as you're still trying to pay the great guy, which is great. <gasps> he oh, in, insists that you do not call Diaco. him. It's Dr. Diaco. I apologize. So start. Our lawyer. So go is, ahead. And go, um, no, yeah. no, no. It's a doctor. And so go ahead and start from the top. Go ahead, sir. So when I went into the... By the way, he took care of me, with me within a half hour. Who did? Who did? He did more for me. Uh, it is a lawyer and uh, Dr. Uh, Dan Diaco. Yes. He prefers just straight yes. Dr. Dan uh, Diaco Esquire. <laughs> That's what he prefers. Yes, so when referring to this great gentleman, this saver of human lives, this superhero, if you will, this Italian and stallion, do, his, you, you call him doctor, doctor. Do, his, he is to be addressed, yes. Dr. Daniel Diaco Esquire. Okay? Dr. Doctor Daniel D, uh, Diaco Esquire. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he did something my own doctor wouldn't do for me. When I went to the pharmacy to go turn in the scripts, the pharmacist told me, are you really going to take these? And he said, you know, the guy, and I said, yeah, I'm going to take these. This is, you know, and he said, well, I wouldn't because it has all these side effects. I said, you know, it's not your business to tell me what I'm going to take. No one's doing anything to help me with COVID, but there's one person that is. I mean, I don't understand 
why Dan doesn't get more praise for what he does. I mean, he saved my life. Well, he saved a lot of people. He saved a lot, including my good friend Ricky Warner, who's the uh, sprint car chief of uh, Rico Abreu and worked for Tony Stewart at the time. Um, Dan's concoction worked. It worked. And, you know. No, 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 Dan, those same boards, that that same governing body that damn near made you not a doctor anymore, or had they written you back and said, oh, hey, Dan, by the way, you were right, man. You were right, and no. we are so sorry. No, they no. just make you sweat it out. Yeah. They never tell you you're off the, off the target. I mean, people don't realize, man, it was touch and go. I had Steve on my phone saying, listen, you need to stop Dan from – I'm like, Steve, I'm not telling Dan what to say about the COVID deal. I like being different. He's like, okay, well, we're, we're, we're on. shut up, Steve. Just worry about making love to Krista. See you later. <laughs> well, my, 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 my question for um, Dr. Dan Diaco Esquire, did the pharmacies give him uh, like pullback? Were they like giving him a hard time? Oh, my God. Were, oh, I got into throwdowns with him. Dan, Dan would call in the, the secret recipe, and some, some places would refuse – to, to fill it, so Dan had to actually find some compounding pharmacies around various cities. There's just like one that we had to go to, right? Well, there was a couple, but yes, mo- one mostly. And so down, I don't want to call them out, Dan, because I don't want them to get heat. But uh, there was, uh, you know what? I don't think they can get heat now because um, you know they the, didn't do the, wrong. the Surgeon General, you know, has supported this and has my position. You know, the Surgeon General of Florida, Lapido. Um, his he supports what I say and and believes what I say because he actually instead of just getting his news from CNN and MSNBC went to the original articles and read them. So anyway, which is the way you should do research. Davis Island Compounding Pharmacy was one to be like, yeah, Dan, we will recognize your concoction, we will fill it. They saved lives, and they and so Dan, you know, at that point, but that didn't help my buddy Ricky Werner who lived in Indianapolis. No. And so Dan was like literally calling two or three or four. Walgreens, CVS, UPO, uh, uh, Indianapolis pharmacies, trying to get them fill, and like Dan, you what it was it was it was less than half would fill them. Oh, but Walgreens, CVS, and Publix had a systemic, um, centralized effort to prevent the prescriptions of ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine to going to COVID patients. They did everything they could to prevent that, and you would have to Actively. flip out. And I still couldn't penetrate it. Sometimes I still would have to go to a third, you know, a, a you know, a, a, a local mom and pop, pharma, mom and pop pharmacy. The right. only ones that would do it because the national chains had a coordinated effort to destroy yeah. any alternative. They therapy. wanted to put that they vax in kill your arm. America. They want to put that vax in your arm. Right. CVS, Walgreens had to cut money deals on. with 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 Pfizer and stuff. Anyway, buddy, I appreciate you. Thank you. That, that you know. These big, huge pharmacy corporations that had cut deals with uh, Big Farm. I mean, just don't don't think that Walgreens and CVS they weren't in bed with Big Farm. Oh yeah, they were, they, and because they were oh. guaranteed to get paid. Yep, as many shots as they could put mm-hmm. in the arm, man. What was it? Wasn't it like seventy five bucks a shot? I don't know. And they also paid the I pharmacists think, and, to give them. And hold on. by the way, pharmacists count pills. Don't play doctor. Don't play nurse. Don't play injector. Because if there's a problem, you can't handle it. So unless you can handle the complications from something you're doing, and unless you have follow up to take care of problems created by something you're doing, I don't think you shouldn't mo- be doing it. I don't think most pharmacists in pharmacy school are ever taught how to give a shot. But they did all, for the last three years. I they've know. been shooting away. They They're just, like they gangsters just, with the shots. The uh, the double, you know the 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 world just looked the other way, saying yeah. you know Grandma's getting a shot from a woman that has usually just fills you know you know she counts. Pills. Birth control pills. They're not Council allowed. They're pills. not to, allowed to give injections. They weren't. Or they- Certainly, there are. Out of nowhere, they just said, "Okay, pharmacists now, can give can give vaccines." Is it, is it my is it my understanding <laughs> that the government gave the vaccines? You know, the places that dispensed you know vac vaccines. I don't think that they had to pay anything for the vaccine, but they made like seventy three dollars a shot. Something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. They're making all kinds of products. I mean, the government was giving them the product for free to get out and, you know. They were giving doctors <clears throat> bonuses if a higher percentage of their patients were vaccinated. Was his Walgreens profits hit $883 million on the uh, COVID testing and vaccine demand? Eight, just Walgreens made almost a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Let me, so that I'm not just so drastically uh 
late today. I'm going to do some words, and then I'm coming back with with the Bill Maher. Like I'm going okay. boom right into the Bill Maher. Okay, it sounds good. The people, no people, squirrel. people will love it. It is so good, and I got a chance. And we're going to post the nine minute version or the twelve minute version. Uh, but it's 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 you know he kind of cusses and stuff a few times. I, he may cuss on he may curse on this particular. A clip that I play, so I'll be ready to dump. We'll do that next. Yes, this is a daily telethon. We gotta keep the lights on somehow, so don't forget PayPal, Cash App, and Venmo. All at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Bubba the Love Sponge. We'll be back after this. What's up, Permagram? That was kind of like the beginning of COVID. It was like, oh, uncharted territory. What's going to happen? Am I ever going to see my friends again? Can I get fat as fuck and no one's going to know? Man, she's, <clears throat> she's a little shot out today, buddy. Dude, when I got furloughed from Horn Blasters and I didn't know when I was going to see another human being again, I think I ate like 10 candy bars in a row. <laughs> No, What's up, 2X? I'm like, Go Red Wings. Man. Oh, thank you, Dad's Rusty Taint. I, uh, I washed it last night, so that's big, uh, good news for me. My hair is getting not long. What up, Orlando? I think I'm going to grow it out again. Now that I have born again virgin hair. <clears throat> oh. Would you ever dare to try another flavor? I have. Nah. <laughs> I try different flavors. I like strawberry banana type smoothies. Yeah, but yeah, that pairs in comparison to chocolate peanut butter combo. I like them both. It's just the, the, the pro- put protein with strawberry and banana sounds good. Mm. The, 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 it's hidden better with the peanut butter. Kabuki, kabuki. Me, Carly, and Camper, and everybody else is. But I would read an article and make a conclusion, and then, then they talk about it on CNN and have the opposite conclusion. That's when I knew there was some bullshit going on. It was just intellectually just, just inconsistent.
Very candy powders. Thanks, JG510GG. Oh, but your other tweet uh, did really well too. What one was the that? The New York one. The what? The New York one. Now, do I get credit for that? Yeah. As long as I re see if reposting it, you don't. But if you quote on it, then no, you, you you do too. You get on both. But yeah, so, you got fifty three. But they got fifty three. That's not how many I got, is it? No, it's you. That's me. Yeah. No. Yeah. Click on click on Polly, and you'll see a change. If you click on the post. See? His did his did 72. Yep. Oh, so I can start doing that? Yeah. That's we what I do with sign and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's what I do with all the sign stuff. And some other stuff. Yeah, you just feed off. Oh, you better watch your fuck out now, buddy. You just better watch your fuck out. I'm gonna be a tweeting machine. I was I was blown away when I saw him with the uh, <laughs> Of the Love Sponge Show. Miss part of the show? We got you covered at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Now back to Bubba Live Worldwide. Uh, Operation Pigmentation. Again, Operation Pigmenta- Pigmentation with two African American barbers from the south side of St. Pete hanging out with Seth is our newest shiny object in our podcast world, and it's doing pretty well. These two cats are. Obis and Carl. Uh, now, now, Seth, have you got any feedback on my Obis deal? What does what does uh, he think? No, they have uh, they have not heard you call them Obis, ah. uh, <laughs> to my knowledge. Uh, go to anywhere, go to anywhere you get your podcasting stuff, and we got a a whole bunch of great stuff. We have an exclusive podcast that comes. It's me, Lummy, Seth, Anna, and Rhett and Macho on Mondays. Then Tuesdays are Clem and Kush. Those are, again, available only in our podcasting world. Then Wednesday is the uh, as the after show breakdown, Seth, I'm sorry, Rhett and Lummy show, which is across all platforms visually and audibly. And then Thursday is Two Live Jew. That's a podcast only. And that's with Anna and uh, and Seth. And then Friday is the Anna Hummel show. And that's across all po- all platforms. So, uh, Seth, one thing, Shannon wants to do something with me. So, um, I think that should be a, that should be a podcast too. Yeah. We just have to figure out what day. <laughs> well, yeah, we got to figure out what day we do it. I mean, we, we, we talked about a day, but any, anywhere you get your podcasting stuff, iHeart, uh, Spotify, Google play, iTunes, Apple, or our, our very own inner, you know, our website, Bubba Army HQ. You can go and download uh, these podcasts and listen to them for free. They're pretty badass. They re- they're they kind of a whole different side of your favorite, you know, we're obviously your favorite show, but it's a different side of us. Melissa Carpenter, $100. She throws hundos. Happy Easter. Love her. God bless. Uh, Thank hello. you. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Hey, Bubba. Uh yeah, question for uh, kind of in line with the COVID conversation for Dr. Dan. My last doctor's appointment, I'm 59 years old. My doc rec- recommended getting the uh, shingle shot. But just the way it's been pushed, I don't trust pharmaceutical industry. Is there any reason I should be? 
Dan, I don't little... think the shingle shot's that big a deal. I mean, I mean, right? It's not that controversial. It's not that different from your original chicken pox shot. And so I don't really have a specific problem with it. I know that shingles can be very painful, very debilitating. But sometimes people get shingles right after getting the shingle shot. So it's not foolproof. But I don't have like a really strong opinion. Dan doesn't way or the feel other as bad about the shingle shot as he does the. the it's not the an COVID. mRNA shot. It's a, it's actually it's, it's an established vaccine. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead and shingle it up, okay, kid. Uh, okay, yeah, I was concerned because the conversation went from, have you had COVID shot? No. All right, well, let's get the shingles. And I was worried that maybe they'd throw in some COVID tickets. No, no, you got shingle. Dan says shingle shot, thumbs up. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, All buddy. right. Uh, here's the Bill Maher. I'm not anti-vax. Here, here's the Bill Maher deal. You didn't see this, right, Dan? No, I have not right. seen it. I get it that we didn't know exactly what was happening at the beginning of COVID, and some mistakes were inevitable. But four years on... I'm tired of hearing, well, we didn't know. No, we didn't. But some people guessed better than others. <laughs> and the people who got it wrong don't seem to want to acknowledge that now. Some people said closing schools for so long was pointless and would cause much worse collateral damage to kids, and they were right. Thank you. <laughs> And there's just not a lot of people that have the balls to roll out like this. No, because no, you get destroyed if right, you do. Right. He's, he's so strong. Thank God he's got the testicles to do it now. He should have done it two years ago. But everyone was afraid because two I think, years ago I you think, got destroyed. I think two years ago he was still barking like this isn't right. They're shoving this stuff down our ass. Oh, here we go. Don't be afraid. Four years ago, the Daily Beast ran a story with the headline, Bill Maher pushes Steve Bannon Wuhan lab conspiracy theory, which was typical of the mainstream media at the time. Of course, it wasn't a conspiracy theory, and it wasn't owned by Steve Bannon. And now everyone, including the Biden administration, admits there's at least a 50-50 chance that the virus could have begun in the lab in Wuhan that was doing gain-of-function research on that virus. Duh. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's, so, it's actually I, obvious. I know, but we were so, back then, we were so freaked out about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't see a lot of retractions being printed. Yeah, when COVID hit, we did a lot of stupid things. Because America never reacts. It only overreacts. True. I agree with that. True. I agree with that. Ubers. Look like those Orthodox Jews who wrap themselves in saran <laughs> wrap in case their plane flies over a grave. We, I mean, look at there. There, here's a woman that's flying. I don't think there's anything wrong with that on a flight. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Seth still travels that way. <laughs> yeah. Seth's traveled out of town Wednesday, and this is exactly what he's taken. You're guaranteed to get sick on on a plane, almost. At least get some sort of scratchy throat. We washed the mail. We did, Brian. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Remember, Brian, the baby face Matroni, would go out with Simple Green or Lysol disinfectant and spray down his Amazon boxes. I know. To be fair, he had four old people in the house. He's a little freak. We play still. I mean, spraying on, down. Come on. I don't, you didn't know. You didn't uh, know. Again, hold on. Baseball in front of cardboard cutouts. <laughs> That was ridiculous. That, that was that ridiculous. Was so weird. The Super Bowl. I mean, that I was, was cardboard cutouts. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Stupid. He's right. He's right. Don't we have one of those? We're here stuck. Somewhere? We're stuck on stupid. Dude. Here you we had go. like a general or something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and and eight in parking lots, or with inflatable dolls. <laughs> they closed the ocean. <laughs> I mean, think about it, man. That is so absurd. We're gonna close the ocean. We bang pots and pans to show our love for nurses and our hatred for people trying to get a baby to sleep. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For two years, we had to get nostril fucked every time. We <laughs> <laughs> and he's right. And man, they would they rape would you. They, oh, would they, rape you. they would jam it up there, man. Here we go. I I had to dump I had to dump that. So what he did oh, what, really what Bill funny. Maher did say was for two years we had to get nostril effed. effed. Serious people talked about having sex through glory holes and if you don't know what a glory hole is, I wouldn't look into it. <laughs> we 
We were told to wash our hands every five minutes and don't ever touch your face. And if you absolutely must go to the beach for the sake of all that's holy, wear a mask. <laughs> Outside. Yeah, I mean, that's for real. That's what he's like saying. We were so freaked out that even outside where the the air is, there's there's so much air and so many particles that if you just keep safe distance away from the guy that's sneezing in front of you, that you probably do not need a mask. But, I mean, really, everybody even at the beach had masks on. But safe distance. Would- I'm sorry. Safe distance was defined as six feet, even though that was completely arbitrary, made up number do when a disease is afoot is get fresh air and sunshine and vitamin D. No, much better to stay locked up, stressed out, and day drinking. (laughs) (laughs) And if you do get COVID, remember, natural immunity is always the worst kind. So even if you've had the disease, you need a shot. Yes, some very bad ideas were embraced as the conventional wisdom, ideas that haven't aged well. And a lot of the dissenting opinions that were suppressed and ridiculed at the time. Like Dan's. Mm -hmm. Like Dan's. Have proven to be correct. Exactly. That was like the one part of this that I wanted to broadcast. Bad ideas were embraced as the conventional wisdom, ideas that haven't aged well. And a lot of the dissenting opinions that were suppressed and ridiculed at the time have proven to be correct. Maybe that's why the powers that be never wanted a COVID commission. Why not? We love commissions. The Warren Commission, the AIDS Commission, the 9-11 Commission. The NFL even had a is ramming your head into another guy's head bad for heads. <laughs> You're right though. Why don't we have why don't we have why don't we have a COVID commission and really, really take to task those people that cost our government would it be safe to say trillions? Oof. If I mean if you take all the free money they remember they would they would send you thirty six thousand dollars for just being a business, <clears throat> right, Dan? I mean everybody was taking mm-hmm. e- every business mm-hmm. got got a PPM loan. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Uh, it says a uh, four point six trillion. Is that what they've tributed? Yeah. So four yeah. four point six trillion dollars. Covis we're in, we're in for Covis. COVID, and that's what my uncle calls calls it Covis. And we're not having a commission. Follow, I mean, don't they always have this infamous li- line or saying, that follow the money? Mm-hmm. Follow the money. $4.6 trillion and we're not, there, there's not going to be anybody responsible for that? No, nope. just, just, just move on. I mean, nobody, there's, there, there was never a meeting that says, hey, let Big Pharma, let Big Pharma is writing big checks for all of us politicians. Yep. We need to, uh, you know. <clears throat> Big Pharma wrote me a hundred and fifty thousand dollar campaign donation alone uh, to get reelected here in Indiana. Well, what are they going to do? Put people on the commission that are being funded by Big Pharma? I wonder what they'll find. Yeah. <laughs> so where's the COVID commission? No, you go to into the, into the Harvards and the Yales, and you go into some of these you know, the doctors that you talked to, Dan. The Cornell. I know you had a, a doctor from Cornell, but the, the, it was mostly the people that were saying what you were saying weren't these front li- front line doctors. It was these. Uh, you know, d- these major, major accredited, you know, scientists and doctors that were part of your group. <clears throat> yes. And those are the people that you put on the commission. You mm-hmm. put those people on the commission. Right. The ones that turned out to be right. To, no, Not no, the ones that turned out to the, be wrong. The ones that intellectually looked at this and was fair about it. Right. And if they look at it again and said, you know what, that did, that vac- that, that particular strain and this vaccination, it, it, it did seem to work. I don't know if they're going to ever see that or not, but I'm just saying if if it if if it would be there, they would say it. They will they will be fair. They will be you fair. Hope. You would hope because it seems to me we haven't learned a thing. Maybe the number one lesson from the pandemic was the need for proper air ventilation. Second was never go on a Zoom with Jeffrey Tubin. <laughs> but- I didn't get that one. I didn't know. Who. What was it? This what guy was do? naked when he was doing the Zoom. He was oh. uh, he was masturbating. Oh. Uh, uh, Yes. All right, I didn't know that one. But it's a little above my intellect. If there's been a ba- big national movement to retrofit buildings, I missed it. Gain of function research is still going on in labs. 
We're still torturing animals by raising our food in conditions ideal for viruses to make the leap to humans. Bird flu was just found in a goat, which means we're just one lonely farmer from the next pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Lummy, do you think farmers have their sexual way with goats? Uh, I don't think farmers do. I think uh, other oh, cultures people do. Oh, in Colombia and Afghanistan. I said other yeah. cultures. I, I know. US. I'm just I mean, calling like, them out. All right. So, so in Colombia. I sent you that Vice video. It was very disturbing. I like did, I was blasting. When, when did you send it? It wasn't. What was it? it was it a goat? Years ago. <clears throat> Uh, not probably about a year ago. I mean, we yeah. had a guy call up Calvin we the uh, cow guy. That, we you know, did have sense. Calvin the cow. It was a donkey. <clears throat> yeah. Cow Excuse effort. Me. Do you think we're meant to have sex with animals? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, no. we can't reproduce. I think you're only meant to have sex with something that you can reproduce with. Your own species. But, yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Your own species. Because, you know, girls having sex with girls can't create babies. So you have to throw the you have to throw the pre- opposite sex of the same species. But there are species that, like for example, a horse and a donkey that can have a mule, but that is not a species because it's sterile. So there are cross pollinations between. But species. I don't think humans are supposed to have sex with animals. No, probably because not. Because I don't think you can get a, a you know a dog pregnant. He was saying the bird flu and the goats. They just found bird flu in cows. Now is that is that a big thing, Doctor Dan? Or goats? Hard telling. Not necessarily. No. Okay. Um, uh, let me see. All right, here we go. But the if they thing. start saying, but when they Maybe do, they, they have, wait a but, 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 Here's the, the problem. What do they do when they have bird flu and a bunch of chickens? They, they kill, kill them. All. Oh, kill so the they have bird flu and a bunch of cattle. They start killing them. You're talking about instead of killing a two dollar chicken, you're killing a four hundred dollar cow. Yeah, and beef goes. You know, your your it's quarter your, your quarter pounder that's one ninety nine now. Lummy is going to be four ninety nine. Well, it's dairy cows too. So there goes milk. There goes milk. Mm-hmm. Not my yogi. But. If there's been a ba- big national movement to retrofit buildings, I missed it. Gain of function research is still going on in labs. We're still torturing animals by raising our food in conditions ideal for viruses to make the leap to humans. Bird flu was just found in a goat. Look at all those chickens. Yeah. That's how you eat them. <clears throat> all right, so here we go. This was the goat effing high spot. We're almost done. We handed out $4 trillion of free money, $280 billion of which was just flat out stolen in what the AP called the greatest grift in U.S. history. And which I mean, think about it in, in our lifetime. The last time that it literally every human being, if you, tr- if you wanted it, could go get free money. Whether it was through a PPM loan and you owned a business or whether it was the all types of incentives they had, you know, for they just there was just, they were just giving away money. Forty five hundred dollar tax credit. Yeah, I mean, like there's you, you, in the form of a check. Started an inflation. I mean, we've given away more money, I think, in the last you know three or four years than pro- probably all the free history. money free money combined. And I mean, I'm just saying, it's viral true. that we now blame on Biden. So we're going to bring back Trump. The guy who ignored COVID like it was the dinner check? <laughs> oh, well, I guess that's it. That's, that's the short end. I guess yeah. that's in. That's, oh, the, wow. that's the short of it. Oh, did you guys see this? Uh, this was the best. I, 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 I put it. I put it. I put it on our Twitter. Go to our Twitter. It's at the Bubba Army. So you know the New York NYPD guy who was killed by an, an illegal immigrant. Was he an illegal? No, he was. He was legal. He was, he was just a just criminal. Offender. Yeah, it was yeah. a repeat offender. Just multi, you know, was it twenty or nearly twenty con- uh, arrests? And yeah, and the government, the go- the governor of New York, this whatever her name, Kathy Hochul. Kathy Hochul has you know, really defunded the police at an alarming rate in, in the in the, in the state of New York. She's that's kind of one of her things. And so she goes, or increase the threshold of crime, so right. they just let people go for stuff, or cause the lack of prosecution. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. So her her politics and just those three areas have really put a lot of bad people back on the streets. One of which killed a police off a, a New York City NYPD police officer, and so she tries to show up because if you're the governor and you have you know a, a, a police officer that dies, you you make sure you show up out of respect. You're the governor. Or the president should have 
And uh, so she tries to show up to this Fallen Heroes uh, memorial service, and the head of the police union makes her go away. He tur- he's t- he tells her, get the hell out of here, get in your little detail, and go out. I loved it. Here it is. Check this out. She's trying to come up in there, Johnny Boohoo, when really it's her laws and, gu- and and leadership that probably contributed to this police officer dying. And this this is the head of the police union. He ain't having it. Watch. I think she says, sure, I'm sorry you feel that way. If you read lips, check this out. <laughs> let me just... Yeah, it looks like sorry you feel that way. Yeah, let me see. Because can I try to... Okay. Sorry you feel that way. You know, she, she, she's up. an idiot because they warned them. They oh, yeah. said, they, if you don't come and show up yeah. if you're one of those pro-defund the police well, they, people. In, in, mm-hmm. in, in particular, the police union sent her office correspondent saying do not show yep. like she was told but she's so narcissistic yeah and she's she's like if you think about the difference between her and DeSantis I know you disagree with the DeSantis decision to remove Andrew Warren and I may disagree with it too but I hate DeSantis. he did that because she, that uh, allegedly Warren was not going to prosecute certain crimes and so she's in a position of power where if she felt like the New York City prosecutor Alvin Bragg wasn't doing his job especially with cops she could have done something about it, and she's exerted zero governmental pressure on the well, here's police. The, here's what she's exerting now: putting her big ass back in her con and her and her and her and her and her which and leaving. Here we go. Check us out. She gets in her little uh, in her little her little uh, her brand new suburban, brand new suburban with uh, <clears throat> four tailpipes. That thing's less than two years old. Detail. Yeah. That's satellite the, on top. There you go. Satellite on top. She's been given the good news. Get the hell out of here. She can watch the view on the way home. <laughs> oh, here, here is uh, the, my buddy Roger Roger Stone. Uh, then let me the goat report. Then we got the Bubba ninety eight rock stuff. That's all on our Twitter account, which is uh, or at what is it X? Is it, is it, it's X, X, yeah. yeah X. X now. X. And, you, and it's a great follow at the Bubba Army. Follow us if 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 you would like. All right, there's the Bill Maher stuff, and then... So, Jay, so wait, is one more Jay, thing, just to follow up on the Bill Maher thing. One last thing. I want to just want to quote this real fast for all the listeners. All cause mortality. That is the, the... All the deaths, if you take everything into account from cancers to car accidents, rose more than 13 standard deviations above baseline after the shots. Not after COVID, but after the shots. The virus was much less significant than other factors such as delayed treatments, lockdowns, and the damage from the vaccine itself. Never before have so many pathologists encountered such a sudden increase in certain cancers, including bone marrow, breast, and others. The spike protein is often found within the cancers. It's scary. Keep getting shots, assholes. <laughs> Keep getting shots, assholes. Is that your official statement we're going with? Yeah. All right. If you want 24-7 on-demand Bubba and the crew, go to BubbaArmyHQ.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this. He doesn't know. He never even made an appearance. <laughs> I got second from Steven. Steven texted me as I was on my way home, like, why you were here for so little? I was like, I got there at 3.30 and I left at almost 7. 6.30. So I was there for three hours. Which um, is Mexican time. I, they started the meal late. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, my, I had the dog issue. The dog issue? He shits in the cage. Still? Yeah. What's the last time he shit in the cage? Two weeks ago. Okay, so that's not still. <laughs> that's like saying you're not shitting. That's like saying that you're not, that you're not shitting right now. Didn't Trey go home to fix it? Well, look at that's me. what he was mad about. <laughs> Who? Stephen was mad that oh that Krista. I, I just heard half the story. Well, that's the whole thing. Is I stayed, and they left and took care of the dog, and I stayed for another hour and a half. <laughs> I don't think it was like it was 
very Mastro Leonardo. Mm -hmm. How did you get home? I drove myself. We took two different cars. Oh, you did. Yeah. I literally stayed longer, Dan. So it was good. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, both, you brought two, five we went to the track on Saturday. Saturday. It was really fun, and everything ran well. And then the families were all good. So because Dan wasn't was there. Close. Yeah. So I got to feel that the end is the area t is the area. Okay, I didn't do anything, but it's fun. Not at all. The best the Come on. on Saturday. I love the doing nothing weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that boy. Hey, Baba, honest. Is is Jane Case good at shuffleboard? No. Is no, it not? not. She, Does she have like a? She's a only won two games. She only won two games. She, she's like two and ten. How Susie? Does she have like a Jeff Sakel or whatever as a partner like we did? She, no, she's got. She have an anchor? No, she's. She just no. But she enjoys it. Yes. That's awesome. Exactly. That's the best. What's your partner's name? Sue. Yeah, Sue. We did a Bubba bowling league once, and it was Danny, Jimmy, me, Bubba, and this guy Jeff, and he got a three hundred one night. And when you see someone get a 300 live, the entire bowling alley stops yeah. and watches the last couple of frames or the last maybe two two full, you know. A 300 is really like count during our That was incredible. During, I've never seen one before. And yeah. so we would do so good because Jeff would make our team better. Oh my God. <laughs> I love that Danny and I had like the biggest handicaps. Was Dan doing his crazy? Yeah, yeah, Danny was feast or famine. It was either a strike or, or a double. Okay. But he had a lot of strikes in a row some days where he would get seven or eight, you know, in a row. That was fun. <laughs> Although I don't can't tip my legs and knees. I don't know how I, how I do I that. Oh, really? Like a a short fan? Yeah, I did know that. I still have my 200 patch, Dan, and your $20 in my bag. <laughs> What's the highest you've ever pulled? I did an official 200 in league where you get like a, a patch for it, but I think That's I bowled. Wild, what did we do? It maybe a 240 in? I've done 240. I think, I, think I, I may have done a 220 between a 220, 240, once or twice. <laughs> That's yeah. That's superb. But very inconsistent. You know. You're not professional. Like, yeah, no, I got a 260 once. You did 60? You got you got a screenshot of that. Yeah, I was like bowling. I was bowling in a bowling alley next to uh, T.O.S. So yeah, at one point, Anna, he was literally going by himself. Like after surgery, there's a bowling alley. Like, oh, I know, he went there. It's pretty cool. Well, yeah, in between patients, you go bowl at T.O.S. Yeah. After, <laughs> afterwards, I go and I then I bowl like six, seven games real fast by myself. Blow off some steam. Just, just, just ah, throw the ball. Just keep throwing the ball, covered in sweat. That by the end, that's how you get good at anything. Repetition. Mm -hmm. Oh, certainly. But if you play by yourself with one lane, it's nice and greased up, and you just keep throwing, throwing, yeah, throwing, throwing, throwing. throwing. Go, go, it becomes go. a workout, and you also you get better at that mouse man because you you throw a dart, you throw a dart, and then wait the team to go the dart. Cash up. You just keep throwing them until you get kind of like, you range locked in. So I just fucking kept throwing, throwing, throwing. Now I got it. Now I got it. So yeah. every now and then I get through a nice. And you know, there's pros that do that now. Mm -hmm. There weren't really when you did it. It was absolutely well, I absurd. The, I saw the PBA NASCAR thing, where the pros was using two hands. And there's a, there's a guy. 19 miles an hour. Yeah. It's pretty crazy the spin they get on it. Yeah. I didn't so. You were ahead of your time, Dale. Well, it's <laughs> visionary. Oh, shit. I just didn't realize that George Washington had slaves' teeth in his mouth. What? Did they say that? Who went to the George Washington? Was that you, Seth? What's that? The George Washington thing, where the they said his fake teeth were really. Teeth. No. Who went to the George Washington? Was it you, Lobby? No, I don't know what you're talking about. They're disturbed because they they said that the George Washington's teeth were made out of like. Was that Shane Gillis? Clothes. Was it Shane Gillis? I think he was part of it. this set. He makes it disturbing so much. Because I remember they thought he was he was special ed or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He rolls up and he's just like, oh hey there, buddy. <laughs> he's like, if the sun was in my eyes, so he was all like, <laughs> oh hey, got a mask on. Jay had me listen to this really funny skit from Saturday Night Live with uh, Jimmy Pivens, hmm? Jimmy Smiths, Jimmy Smiths, where he was Spanish. They they were over pronunciating. 
Uh -huh. Oh, no. Over to not saying the Spanish words. <laughs> All the times Hulk Hogan or Tucker Carlson called in? We have it all for you on BubbaArmyHQ.com. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Uh, go out and get your Powerball ticket today. Maybe that's why our, our donations are a little bit low today, Lummy. Uncle Eric, $100 in the cash up. Thank you, my, my friend. <laughs> PayPal, Venmo, Cash App at the Bubba Army. Jay Diaco Esquire has joined uh, the mix. We usually cross, cross. We have cross Diaco swords uh, for thirty minutes, usually like eight thirty to like nine fifteen or anything like that. Dan, I saw that you got your protein shake today. Mm -hmm. do, do we are we still, are we following security protocol? Yes, we are. They were left outside because the front door was locked. I, thank you, my friend. Um, now here's what I understand. Biden, I guess Biden, I, I've never known, well, what, what have we had, 45, 46 presidents? Something, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, I've never known any president to think that they need to get involved in Easter uh, and and maybe redirect or reclassify what Easter is. I think most presidents, regardless of how religious they may or may not be, are like, listen, this is a national holiday. Uh, it's a religious holiday, different religious religion. It, Easter means different things to different religion as in different people. But I, certainly not anything that I could come up with would be anything more important than what Easter represents to the average American. Well, Joe Biden's Bubba, Catholic. Bubba, Easter is the most important religious holiday for Christians of the year. It's the most important day of the year for Christians, more so than Christmas Day when Jesus was supposedly, it's the celebration of Jesus' birth, the celebration of his resurrection. All Christians find that to be the single most significant and important day of the entire year. All right. So, and religion sees no color, blue or red. Religion, you know, right? And Ideally. so I don't understand how Biden... Who the hell is advising this guy saying his Biden declares this Easter Sunday transgender day of visibility? Well, not sticking enough for Joe Biden, but this was established in 2009. It was founded. And in 2021, he proclaimed March 31st as transgender day of visibility. So it was it, it just happened to be that Easter fell on. Oh, March 31st. But, but okay. he doesn't have to celebrate the two at the same time. Correct. But yes, That's, I mean, I'm I mean, not he's still yeah. highlighting it. Yes. Yeah, and, and so I mean, and the and the government and the and the president comes up with this proclamation. This is now, is. therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim March thirty first, twenty twenty four, as Transgender Day of Visibility. What I call upon all Americans to join us in lifting up the lives and the voices of transgender people throughout our nation and to work towards eliminating violence and discrimination based on gender identity. In witness whereof, I uh, have hereunto set my hand to th this 29th day of March in the year of our Lord of 2024 uh, and of the independence of the United States of America, 248th Joseph. What? A do you like, think you read that? <laughs> Could you read mean, it? <laughs> like, like, here's the deal. Like, why do we have to set a day? aside to recognize transgender people i think transgender people <clears throat> don't necessarily want a day of recognition they just want to be able to trans into what they're doing to transform no, they want a day it, they want a week a month a year well they, they started this lady started it in michigan and it was to raise awareness of how they were being treated in the public and then worldwide. And there, I guess here's a guy. Here's now, TBD. That's TBD. Patrick I like him. David. Yep. He needs to slow down. Though. He, if he's, it sounds like he's drunk. He's got a huge <laughs> a podcast right now. He's an Iranian. <laughs> he came over in the 80s, a Coptic Christian, came over with nothing. He's a couple hundred millionaire, and he's got a very, very popular podcast right now. 
This is why as of last year I stopped praying for tolerance because of the things that have taken place by Christians. Being way too tolerant with the behavior that's taken place. He needs a windscreen on his yeah. microphone. Get a microphone Absolutely. with I got, a buffer. I, I, I feel like he's really got some pretty cool stuff he might be saying. He says great stuff. But I can't really, you know, all I hear is... ...taken place by Christians. Being way too tolerant with the behavior that's taken place on the White House. Leadership at the top announcing that on Easter Sunday tomorrow, for many of you that will be going to church to celebrate, you know what you're celebrating, resurrection, the White House chose to celebrate transgenders, the 0.1% of America, transgenders, who in many cases are going through challenges both mentally and emotionally, but we're wanting to celebrate the 0.1%. Again, the- point, point mm. one, mm. not 1%. Point one, point one percent are pe- are people that identify as such. Christian nation, not the Christian leaders who have done incredible things for this country and the level of disgrace that this brings to us as a country, to the rest of the world, that our president wrote this and announced this yesterday for Sunday is a sp- Man, he's really pandering to the wrong people. He really is. is. Joe. Joe. Oh, okay. The president. He's agreeing with what he's saying. In a face to many Christians around the nation, and you, you shouldn't be okay with this, and you ought to stand up for yourself and realize that this is not acceptable. It's time for Christians to stop being so tolerant with this type of behavior. By the way, this isn't a left-right center thing. Oh, you got, hey, buddy, I don't know who you you are. I guess you're pretty important. But uh, <laughs> you got you got you got to tolerate it, or you'll get canceled. You, you, you like his you format, Bubba. You can't say you can't say hey. I'm a Christian, and I don't believe in a person being able to transition. That is a sin. You'd like his format. He's got kind of a an intellectual liberal who's kind of coming around. He's got a, a kind of from the streets military New Yorker who drops the f bomb a lot. He's got kind of an intellectual guy. And Isn't he a refugee all, from Iran? Yeah, they're they're. It's a pretty interesting podcast. I think you'd find it. I think you'd you'd probably find it interesting. They're this great, is great, if I listen um, to podcasts. Great guests. I don't listen to podcasts. Just my own. You're doing I, so much content, you don't have time I, to. But you're like, right. You're a right. A lot of people consume t- um, news this way. By the way, I, we're I, getting I ready for more news this way than I do. We're getting ready on television anymore. I mean, Seth, I think we're getting ready for our. We're relatively soon going to be hitting our seven millionth download. I think. Yes. Yes. You got a million yeah. that quick? No, no, not a million. No, but seven. you were six just a second ago. I mean, that last million came that quickly. We're, we're getting That's there. That's incredible. We're getting there, and I think we're approaching our thousandth episode. Okay. Yes. This is the guy that uh, Rob works for now, or has been for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Rob Gardulo. Uh, oh. It fell As if you're a Christian really? and your life's God. Yeah. You no, know, hold on. Gardulo works for. This guy in the Miami Dolphins. Correct. This guy, that's he's And good. Gargiulo, he's did you hear about this, it. Seth? Gargiulo gets to travel with the Viking. I mean, sorry, with the with with Dol- the Dolphins on the team plane, because c- he's like in charge of what media relations or podcast or cool. hard telling what he's. But, <clears throat> but he travels with the team. Yeah, I heard about that. That's pretty killer. Comes before your political party, you ought to stand up. If your political party comes before your faith don't do anything about it you decide what you value more how you vote or how you pray if we get those orders he's 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 had a horse racing deal (laughs) laying out 2500 on the two horse right future looks bright but if we stop fearing god and no longer wanting the favor of god future doesn't look as bright as we think it does but you're right look at the background you can see the the, the center field lake and the Mm -hmm. white the white fencing that's hilarious here's what you know here's what i'm most mad about is that the republic in fact my family we were talking about this yesterday at easter and and my family is for the most part conservative and my mom is you know more conservative than all of us just because she's a little bit older and she's probably the most religious out of all of us so but 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 i'm like mom the 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 gop or the republican party has gone so far right with this abort like i am most i i'm going to be honest with you i am most mad on two things abortion and immigration those are the two things that i'm most mad about <clears throat> and i think that maybe the republicans could probably do better on immigration than what the current administration is doing and it absolutely makes me sick to my stomach 
as to how far right the conservatives have gone on abortion. And like to the point where, you know, Ron, like I absolutely hate Ron DeSantis. Hate? Hate. Wow. Ron DeSantis just on how some of his very, very strong armed czar dictator type rulings he's made. And one of which is how he locked down abortion. He locked it down way more than it needs to be locked down. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know why somebody can't tell. And I, and my, and I was talking about this to my mom. I said, why can't somebody tell somebody high up in the GOP, tell somebody to say, listen, we got the Democrats on the back of their heels with immigration. They're going to come at us with these gun shootings and these gun stuff, but we can get through that. Americans will never give up their guns. But where we're really, really missing the ball is how strict we're trying to be with abortion. Most conservatives want a bigger window of opportunity. And states that have com- that had trigger laws that as soon as Roe v. Wade was overturned, their state went to zero. There was a bunch of those that happened have since had referendums and by I don't I think four or five states have had refer and I think they're five I think they're five and oh well, start Me- meaning about reversing the, the draconian restrictions yes by saying you know what we're going to allow abortion and then they try to whittle down how long it needs to be in very conservative states like Ohio and Alabama and Arkansas you're absolutely right well Trump said a like week my to- mom is yeah. like my mom is like I'm all for you know 20 weeks, 22 weeks. And That's you're saying my... your mom is, quote, very conservative? Yeah. Super. Well, Trump said a week ago on a radio, uh, WABC, the number of weeks now people are agreeing on 15, and I'm thinking in terms of that. It, mm. I'll, it'll come out to something very reasonable, maybe along the lines I'm, of 15 weeks. But there's still, Dan, you're a doctor. There's still things that don't rear their ugly head until 17, 18. It needs to be 22, 24. It needs to be 22, 24. It's really that way. That way, at 22, 24... You really, really, really can ensure that your baby up is is meeting all the markers. It, there, there, there's nothing that's gone awry. If you're at week 23, 24, chances, and you've checked out all along, chances are your bun in the oven's going to be okay. Yes, but, you've, but, you've gotten past most of the uh, the frightening, right? You know, marks and and, right. and, and important milestones. The People getting abortions between 18 and 24 weeks aren't teenagers that just accidentally got pregnant. No. They're the people that actually have like an actual problem with the baby. And or, so, or they're right. responsible adults that planned it. Because again, you no know, one wants to have a baby. Teenagers, seven, two 17 year olds that get knocked up, they're getting it done, you know, week eight. Or they're having it in right. a but you McDonald's don't find bathroom. Out serious stuff when you're trying to have a child until 15, 16 weeks when you start having these serious ultrasounds. Yeah. And I had that issue with Trey where at 15, 16 weeks we found out that he had hydronephrosis. And, and you know, we were just trying to see if he had a penis or not. And it's like this really happy day. And then all of a sudden the technician comes in and says, Oh, the doctor's going to come in in a moment. And you're you're like, what? And so the doctor comes in, and it's no longer Anytime fun. Anytime the nurse has to tell it's you no the doctor's on his way, it's usually not a good thing. You no, know, and with right? Trey, it was a, it absolutely it was scary as hell. And so we had to start doing ultrasounds every week, and the condition was something that we may have had to make that tough decision. Now, he was born with this condition. We met a surgeon day one. He had his kidney out half at six months. It was a very traumatic, scary time, but it was a mechanical problem, a plumbing issue that Danny and everyone, all of us, could wrap our heads around it. But we had the on. same type of issue with that Sage. Did, that didn't show. Where, that didn't show. Trace Trace issues didn't show at week six. No, no. Didn't My wife show. wasn't. We didn't even know she was pregnant. She's so skinny with right. spotty periods. Right. We had no idea she was <laughs> I mean, pregnant. For so, real. I mean, that's the other problem. But when you're talking, like Danny's talking about responsible parenting, you're trying to raise a healthy child. Neonatal care is so good now that babies that would have been miscarriages 25 years ago make it through to these hard these hard phases of pregnancy. With Sage and a couple of miscarriages we had before Sage, we had really scary indicators for trisomy 8 and all these things that would have been catastrophic. And we had to have amniocentesis and we had to have all of these things. And we, without saying the words, I can't believe I'm going to say it publicly, we, we had that discussion and 
if this test had come back the other way, we would have made that exact hard decision that a lot of parents are are forced to make but out of, the, but out of the wellness of the baby or their family or their wife or whatever. That Ron DeSantis has now taken away from you. And for me, it's less about weeks and more about trimesters because my brother at the time was counseling me and he's like, second trimester, we need to get out. Second, we need to get, make sure before the, before the end of the second trimester. And so how many weeks is that, Danny? 27. 20, yeah, 26, 27. So we were like, that was, you know, that if, if you really, for me, I mean, that was what we needed. Right. Was second trimester. And you're not going to get that in Florida right now. What, no. What, what is, so what is Florida right now? Six, for responsible people. Six weeks. Six weeks. So that's what's, to got, that's what's got me so pissed off at the GOP right now, is that, that they don't even know what the average conservative dude wants. If you know what? We, 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 it doesn't matter conservative it, or liberal. I'm a conservative guy. I was going to do what I, what I felt was right for my family. So this is apolitical, Bubba. That's the point, is we live in a very conservative state. And a guy like me and you and Dan, who everyone would consider to be, you know, I guess the way our personalities are in the show may be more right than we actually are, do not believe in this conservative law. But th- but they are just absolutely doubling down on it. It's it's been it's nuts. ridiculous. I want to carry my handgun to the abortion clinic, smoking a joint with no with <laughs> with, 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 with no illegal immigrants in sight. Well, that's what, what I want. What do you? That's the, <laughs> no that's what, listen. And at the end of the day, whether it's Seth or whether it's me or whether it's you, Jay, or whether it's you, Dan, I want to live in a country where I can take my. Joint and gun. <laughs> Joint with, N- yeah. with NBA exactly. and NWA on the radio. Right. Singing along. I want to take my joint. Sign. I want to be able to smoke a joint with a handgun responsibly tucked away uh, while taking my over 18 year old uh, girlfriend or wife. <laughs> To the abortion clinic because we at uh, you know at Mark at week sixteen we just found out some very disturbing you know possibly Down syndrome we just found out some very disturbing news that only reared its ugly head at at this time period and the state that I live in says yeah clear up until about week twenty four twenty five you know go ahead it's your des- your body your decision now living in Florida. It's six weeks. I mean, you don't even know you're pregnant. Skinny girls that spot. Skinny girls that spot don't even know they're pregnant at six. Skinny girls that spot's lives matter. That should be a country song. Well, what Skinny th- girls that spot don't even know they're knocked. What do you think about what, do you think about what Trump said about the 16 weeks? I think that's still... I think that's too, too short. It's super. It sounds great. It's amazing. It's better. It's better, but it it's, it's, better. Not, it's not 23, 4 no. like we should be. Hold on. A uh, breaking news. Uh, this uh, is from the guy who plays for Magic's the, uh, Jonathan Isaac. Or, by the way, Orlando Magic, which I really applaud this guy. I really do. Yep. I Takes really, huge, huge sack to do I, this. I applaud this, this Orlando Magic. Magic's Jonathan Isaac criticizes White House over Transgender Visibility Day. Transgender Day of Visibility falls on Easter Sunday this year. President Biden marked Sunday as Transgender Day of Visibility and drew criticism. Orlando Magic star Jonathan Isaac joined in on ripping the president, saying on X, formerly Twitter, the White House, no s exactly what they are doing. They want you to hate. This helps no one and only promotes division. He wrote, So look at that. Is is this when everybody was kneeling for the national anthem and this guy Mm -hmm. here? See his BLM shirt, so, and he's standing. And he's he's standing up, you know, yep. with pride. Yes, to honor our country. Yes, they know exactly what they are doing. Like, why are these girls kneeling with masks? You have to. What do you mean you have to? That's he a, didn't have to. Everyone had to. I'm saying like the, not they, him. They would, no, they would get in trouble. Not Jonathan Staffers Isaac. Staffers weren't going to stand. Not up, Jonathan man. Isaac. Jonathan Isaac said, "Bitch, give me the ball. I'm going to shoot a three, and I'm also going to stand up." Florida State alumni. We should be angry, but shouldn't lose the spirit of what tomorrow... Seth, are we looking for an uh, 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 Isaac uh, rookie card? You're damn right we are. Or means. <laughs> Don't lose focus. Because he is risen, there is hope for all. Isaac joined the likes of Donald Trump, Vivek Ramaswamy, and other political commentators to criticize the president. Trump's national press secretary, Caroline Levitt, called it appalling and insulting. Oh, I we, want to see her. Is she is she the redheaded Raggedy Ann? No, no, no. There's no. Call on Joe Biden's face. 
No, who's that? Who's the redheaded Raggedy Ann? Jean Pierre. 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 Oh Miami really? Was he really? Florida State, yeah. That's hey, that, awesome. that, that big guy, that big guy for Purdue came from I from my IMG. Oh yeah. Now when does IMG start recruiting? Like eighth grade? Oh, oh yeah. even earlier than that, I think. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And if you're and there's two ways to get there. Have a rich dad like Dan <laughs> and it's like what, seventy four thousand a year or something oh, my like God. that? Yeah, it's so about much. that. Yep. And that's if just your regular or you get a scholarship. Literally, you'll give like seventh or eighth grade scholarships and yep. they don't pay nothing. But that's you know, these these are the, 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 the you know, the guys that are gonna be studs. Jesuit goes down there knowing they're gonna get an ass kicking. Hold on. And Dre- <laughs> Je- and Jesuit, one of the premier programs of this area. Of the nation one year. Last uh, yeah. two years ago, top 10, they were number one but in, in Florida. Certainly in this area, a top three all time, always consistent, always good school, Jesuit, Solid. goes down to IMG and gets beat like 66 to 14. <laughs> That's a long bus with right the J- there. With the, J- with the JV team. <laughs> That's exactly right. Right? Yep. <laughs> Let me. This is uh, the guy with the Corvette. Who is he? Is he? Is Rice, he? Rice uh, from Kansas City. Is this the? Yeah, he's yeah. the. Oh wow. Yeah, he's the wide receiver from Kansas City. There, I don't think there is any sound on this. Oh, well, that's dash cam Willie. And he he was driving a Corvette. I'll boom, take this case. Comes in. Boom, <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> then he pushes the SUV over. Then he hits uh, the Corvette. Hits the the concrete. And then Three supposedly, cars. Lummy. Four. A bunch of people got out of the Corvette. Just started walking down the and, road. And started running down the road, and they might have had guns. <laughs> well, yeah. one of them is, I believe, is uh, him too. They all left. Yeah, they have not yeah. been. They have not been found. No, no. no. They uh, made it. What do you mean they made it? How can you? Where's the, where are you running? Look at the size of that wall. No, they ran somewhere, Jay, and they can jump <laughs> a wall. They're fast. Come on I mean, now. I mean, Jay, just because they can jump that wall and I can't, you know, they're free. <laughs> they might Bobby, gone. you and I'd be on the side trying to get that top part of the wall. Maybe they could try to get back in the car. I don't know, Bubba. This isn't good. I mean, you remember what happened with Henry Ruggs of the Raiders? I mean, yeah. he ended up ended up killing a lady and and the dog and a dog. I think he was drinking. I think yeah. the only good thing is that there wasn't a. I don't think anybody no, I think got killed. Someone's in the hospital. They're in the hospital. Two two are in the hospital. Oh, they are in the hospital. They're in the hospital, yeah. and he and he fled the scene. So. Was, the, the Corvette was racing a Lamborghini. It's not really. It's it's funny to look at and think of. Oh, he can't jump the wall, but it's not a fight. I mean, that's a real accident. These are injured people. Leaving sure. the scene of an accident with injuries can be. Like like an eight-year sentence in Florida. Do not do that. Right with a gun. The gun. The gun doesn't uh, amplify doesn't that particular it. sentence, but it doesn't help. You're right. I was uh, before I go into words, and we'll come back with Larry David. I love Larry David. I haven't seen the latest. Is it, does it, they come? Out, is it Mondays or Sundays? Sunday. So it was. I could get it today. Yeah. He got in an argument with who? Um. Chris Wallace. Chris Wallace. It, it wasn't an argument. Chris Wallace was just interviewing him and asked him some questions he didn't like. But it, it was a it was a lively and fun debate, even though it seems like it was uh, ill spirited. It wasn't. Should we uh, should we get should we go it's get into funny. that next? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, you'd right. like it. If you want to deep dive into the Bubba the Love Sponge show from the past, go to bubbaarmyhq.com. The Bubba the Love Sponge show. We'll be back after these words. Shut up. <laughs> okay? How about you shut up? Is that 
kills his father. So I think he's like, and I read him so hard. One time, you go out in the nightclub, yeah. you look around the room, you scan it, you say, you know what? Never mind. And you walk it. I didn't say never mind. I said, I don't think so. <laughs> really? I mean, you didn't say a word. No. You didn't go out. You didn't do it at a couple of jobs. Oh, well, <coughs> no, I didn't do anything. I just yeah. looked them over. Yeah, I turned it off. Dan left. Sorry. I don't know. I just uh, didn't like the sign. Well, I, I should have said something. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. And what did, what did they do? It was, <laughs> I guess they remembered. Man, they made things on the Did you know what Barbara Walters said? Great. There's no such thing as an industry question. Really? There are only industry questions. Oh, wait. Okay. Parts of it. I want to ask you a question. About Trump. They're talking about Trump, right? Yeah, but they said you're supposed to be questions. Yeah. 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 He never got him that drink? He never got him that drink. Just, Why didn't the staff get I just thought it was one of those things, like, if you ask me for something, I would stop whatever I'm doing. I'm going to get you because you're my guest. Yeah. It's like, at my house, you're just going to our house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're on my podcast. It's like, okay, what can I get you? Yeah. It's all about making people comfortable. Get a couple of them in and see what he says. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what Joe Rogan does. What do you yeah. want? You want a cigar? You want to do anything? You want smell alcohol? You want yeah. beer? You want what you want? You know? Comfortable. So it's just like those little type of slight little like personal and personal communication things that you see like, or cut them off or just ignore certain things. Which mm -hmm. is interesting. When you see, when you see it. Yeah, I think I did see their discussion about Trump and <coughs> why. Well, he was just when he was trying to justify um, Gavin Newsom. This what was so funny. Tell me something. Oh, tell me something right. you think Gavin Newsom did. Yeah. Would makes, like, he can win. <laughs> That's not. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I guess if you think that Trump is worse, then you're willing yeah. to... Yeah, and, and for me it was less about the topic and more about the rationalization between mm -hmm. these two guys that are considered intellects in their mm -hmm. various camps. Yeah, and, I, I, do, I do like it. I can't help it. I do too. I, do. I watch them a lot. Time. Patrick Bet David just reminds me of my friend's uncle. Persian. And apparently, I don't think he said that they had a discussion about Persian and, and like whether that was okay to say. He's like, it's like what he call that shit. It's Persian. Yeah, I just looked up now. He's actually, I don't think he's ethnically Persian. He was a Syrian. He's born in Iran. Uh, PBD is born in Iran. Yeah, yeah. And but I mean, he's ethnically. Times. Sure, but he's ethnically yeah. Syrian Which is, yeah. and Armenian. Which is so interesting. So that makes sense why he's Christian. Yeah. They were they're the common Christians that all like, took off at that time. Because they were being persecuted. So he can speak five languages. So yeah. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I know. I know. I'm kind of surprised Trump hasn't been on there. Because he can get him. Easy. He can get him. Joe Rogan won't allow it. Well, I know, I thought that was why we had him on. You're listening to the man that is best friends with Deion Sanders, Tony Stewart, and not Hulk Hogan anymore. Now, back to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Uh, we often think living a more heart-healthy life means making some huge, unsustainable changes. Well, 
With Super Beat Heart Chews, you can get daily blood pressure support in just two tasty chews a day. Uh, and they even promote heart healthy energy without the stimulants. Paired with the healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants and Super Beats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective. That's two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone. And how can you incorpor- incorporate them into your daily routine? It's easy. You just take two chews and chew, chew one. Then let me maybe chew the other one or wait a little bit later and chew it. Yeah, they're It's good. the number one doctor, pharmace- pharmaceutical, and also cardiologist recommended uh, beat brand for cardiovascular health support. No pills to swallow, no ingredients to mix or prepare. It's all plant-based. It's no artificial sweeteners and or colors. Double your potential with Super Beat Heart Chews and get a free month supply of Super Beat Heart Chews on all bundles and also a free full-size bag of turmeric. That's worth 25 bucks if you get your go order going on now. And you've got to go to BubbaLovesBeats.com. Again, get this exclusive offer only at BubbaLovesBeats.com. As much as I bitch and moan about what's wrong with stuff, this is what's right with 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 stuff. And here is a guy, an African. I don't know. I don't know that he's African American. I don't. I don't know what nationality is. Ellie De La Cruz. Yes, he plays for the Reds. And I think up until this year, he's always needed an interpreter. Now the interpreter game is a dirty game right now with that with that one dude that plays for the dart. Was it uh, Shohentani or whatever the hell his name is? What's yeah, his name? Shohei Otani. Yeah, his interpreter supposedly did a whole bunch of bad stuff, stole a bunch of money, all kinds of stuff. So the interpreter uh, world is is not necessarily the most pristine world to live in right now. There's a lot of these athletes that have them because they don't understand our our. our our language and cannot communicate with this with the skipper or anybody for that matter. And this guy, who's he? Who's he again? Let me. Is it Billy De La Cruz or uh, Ella, Ellie, Ellie De La Cruz from the Dominican? He okay. went over this, I, I guess, over the off season and learned English. Nice. It actually, learned our our native tongue so that he didn't have to have an interpreter anymore. And when he did interviews, he could. Do them in a, in in uh, in English, and, it, and it's very strong that he did that too, Bubba, because he has so much potential mm-hmm. that he could be one of the faces of baseball. This guy could be. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So to to get him to be able to and him to understand, you know, to be able to connect with his fans, I just think is is a massive and deal. This is, this is a big. This is a great PR move. He is by all, by, by all means for everybody. He's six five. He's fast. He was the first guy uh, since uh, nineteen nineteen to steal second, third, and home in the same inning. Yeah. Oh my God! Can I can I say a couple points here because I just agree with you so much and it's so important to send this message to people. It's, you know, Manu, uh, what is it? Manny Rivera, he got the President's Award years ago and he talked about the most important thing he did was learn English because he could communicate with his coaches and his fans and and the people around him. And in one generation, my family lost Italian because my grandmother, when she came over on the boat, she refused to teach her children Italian. She didn't want my father to have an accent, and she didn't want him to be treated differently. She wanted him to assimilate she was a ver- and to learn she, she was English. a visionary. And so we don't know Italian in our family because of my grandmother's desire to be an American and to assimilate. And it's what changed our trajectory because we were able to educate ourselves through learning the English language. And, you know, my father was the first college graduate, medical school graduate. My grandmother never graduated eighth grade. In, in Italy. And so what this young man did is so admirable and it's something that everyone else who's in any division of any league should take upon themselves yeah. if you're trying to become a especially, citizen here. Especially if you are potentially one of the huge stars of the league. It just plays better with branding and endorsements and ticket sales and fans that you know our language. But just like you were talking about like knowing the skipper being able to talk to your teammates, right? Being able to have that interpersonal communication that I reliance can't handle on Seth each other by himself. Can I can imagine if Seth had an interpreter? <laughs> hey, interpreter, tell him I'm going to beat his ass. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that Shohei Otani, they all his teammates said he speaks perfect English and they can totally understand him. <laughs> That's but hilarious. Just, but he decides, you know, not he decides not to do it when he, he gets big, out. He big timed him. Whether, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you know who used to do that was uh, Ichiro. 
Ichiro, they said, was uh, the fu- one of the funniest guys in the locker now, room with English. Now, did Wanderland Franco, uh, the guy we just lost, did, well, didn't did he have, have to have an interpreter, too? Well, technically, but he didn't know English. He has to have an interpreter once all this stuff came out. Right. Here we go. Hold on. Yeah, it's so important to me because now you guys understand, understand what I say. Oh, nice. It's important to the fans. So you have to understand, he didn't, la- you know, he learned this in the offseason, and it's still somewhat broken and not really, he's you know. He's trying. But he's it, like it, either 19 yeah, or 20, awesome. by the way. He's 22. 22. Yeah, he's, 20, he's 22. Amazing. And he just, I'm just, I'm so proud of, I'm not even a Cincinnati Red f- guy, but I am so proud of this dude. I'm just like a this, fan, though. This, and just like I said, as much as I accentuate what's screwed up, this is what's right. This dude here, right here, man. This is what's right with 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 things. It's important to the fans to understand me, and me understand the fans. And I I put a lot of work in my on my English to talk with you guys, and I think I'm doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it makes you, it makes you, and yeah. it makes you just lo- it just make you it makes you like the guy, no right? doubt. It just makes you like him, and you know that it you know he's he's got it's, a cute little it's smile. Gonna, it's gonna you be know what it's I mean? gonna be broken, and it's gonna be kind of sometimes hard to understand. But you're just you're pulling for the dude, man. He's trying. But I think I don't know. I, I can vouch for it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't awesome. know. How did you uh, How did you work on it? I will. I practice every day talking with the other guys and. I just thought with them, and I just let go. And his teammates are the ones that kind of, you know. Helped him along. Yeah. I like that with American guys because I, I create confidence. So Jorge wasn't? Hey, I don't need him no more. Yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't doing the job? Yeah. So Jorge must have been his interpreter. Exactly. <laughs> and, I don't need him no and more. He completely, <laughs> he completely threw Jorge underneath yeah. the bus. Listen. I create confidence. So Jorge wasn't. Hey, I don't need him no more. Yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> He's throwing <laughs> jokes in English. That's not hard. To, that's not easy to do. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. You're right. Yeah, he, he was doing the job, but. Yeah, I can leave. Thank you, guys. <laughs> you can tell the Reds have got the Reds have got him on a short lease because he keeps looking over to the PR guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so the interpreter just stood but up and walked he out. He helped me a lot. A lot. <clears throat> you know what sucks is that here are the Reds. They got their up and coming face of the franchise, you know, doing the right thing. It's re- it's just a good, it's a great story. It makes you want to pull for them. It really does. And then we got our face of our franchise that we committed hundreds of millions of dollars to that's probably going to end up in a Dominican Republic uh, a prison. I don't know. It came out over the weekend that the whole case may fall apart. Well, hold on now. What? It uh, Headlines were uh, the case may fall apart if prosecutors can't convince the uh, judge by the deadline. That they should move forward with the case. So hold on. They're saying now that the prosecution may not have a strong enough case to bring in front of the judge and the judge may throw it out? Correct. But now if that's the case, does that put Franco... I mean, I saw... Seth, I think maybe you saw it too. They didn't include him in the op- yeah. opening day 40-man roster. Correct. He's still on the... Uh, the I think it's the pup list or one of those <laughs> right. things. Administratively. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, if this thing gets thrown out does american base does the major league baseball association do they continue their investigation or they're like okay i mean you know since he can't be tried in his native country for this particular crime we don't have anything for him there's been reports that uh, major league baseball would just suspend him for maybe up to like a year what a mean, year what well, i Jeez. mean didn't trevor bauer he was never yep. he didn't really face he didn't he wasn't found guilty of anything exactly. and, and he's he's banned for life pretty much like no one no team's going to sign him so yeah. i look here's the thing i i know you could probably throw out a case and everything but i mean it was essentially spelled out that he had a relationship with a 14 year old that finally spoke out because she was tired of getting used by her mom who made a deal with Wander to get paid and to get a car. And when she wanted a new car, Wander didn't do it. And then that's when every, all, all hell fell, you know, everything right. fell apart. Right. So it's going to be hard not to believe any of that happens if you see this guy out here playing for the home team. I mean, do you think that there's a chance the Rays get him back? I mean, you, you know the Rays would want him back, especially if he's cleared – in the Dominican Republic, there's no trial, there's no nothing. Do you think Major League Baseball lets him come back? Do you think the Rays want him? Like, what do you think? What do you think the future? If if 
if there is no trial in the Dominican Republic, right, Lummy? And yes. they're saying the case is falling apart. Does Major League Baseball still swoop in? And you know, and do you think the Rays want the guy? Uh, I think I think the MOB suspends him for a year. That gives him enough time off. He's out of the, and then uh, the Rays bring him back. I mean, and the and the and the Rays they certainly want to bring him back, don't, yeah. they, don't they? I think they they put him down in the minors when he's allowed to play again, and then let him come back up. And I think Rays fans will forget. Uh, Larry David, who we were just speaking about. Uh, went to the uh, what UConn? Um, I forget what game it was. It was UConn, uh, Illinois, Illinois, Illinois. Yeah. And and look, he's look look at him. He's, oh, he's, more he, like he, room. He he just he's just he's just the best, is he not? <laughs> he's the best. Just everything fine. And then there, here he is on the jumbotron, and they're saying that he's looking miserable. He always looks so annoyed. He just always just doesn't give a, f- a what, what you think about him. What the hell going on? It's, it's, that's going to be Dan that, when that, he's old. That's Dan. Or now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love Larry David. I really do. His, this is him on um, to the Chris Wallace show. And this is on Rumble, by the way. Right, Lummy. I think this was. I think this was exclusive. To, was it exclusive to Rumble? Was it broadcast first on Rumble? Yeah, he or, did, he hosted on Rumble. The Chris Wallace. Chris Wallace. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. Because, sure. Because my, sure. fa- my what do you got? My father always said, "People are fascinated by how much rich people are worth." I remember. And he's right. Like, do we not all collectively like? Net worth, net worth, yeah. net worth. Yes. Like we always want to know what somebody's got. Or... And usually when you start typing in their name on Google, it's the first thing that comes yeah. up. I him famously asking Johnny Carson once what he's worth. That's There's a, a lot of talk. A, a terrible, terrible question to ask. <laughs> Who does your father think he was, by the way? <laughs> we know. Yeah, we know. Okay, still, so here's the question. I, I I, hope, I I hope. Larry David might be the most brilliant deadpan Actor to ever live. I don't know if he's acting. Well, I, no, just just the way he rolls yeah. around and the way he grants interviews. Just and just, he just he's so it's. He may be one of the biggest stars. That's really not a star ever. I mean, he's putting his dad over and kind of putting him under all at the same time, and with that like one clever comment. Well, Who is your I dad hope that anyway? Johnny Carson said, to him, Mike, none of your business. That's none of your business. He in effect said that. Yeah, so here's okay. the question. Yeah. The, uh, on the internet, I actually looked. The over under is half a billion dollars. <laughs> no, this, we're not doing a spit take here. <laughs> By the way, I'm out of water. Okay, I'm out. I'm out of water. You're out of water. Yeah. Is there anybody? Can I get more water no, here? That's it. That is was that the it? Allot- that was the allotment. Is that my allotment? That's it. No, yeah. I'm sorry. How, first you know what? We, we've how, had. A, I've done a hundred interviews. You? I've done a hundred interviews. You know, it, Seth. It almost feels like a like a curb curb episode. Uh, does be, it not? They might be shooting something. Yeah. yeah this okay. Is, you're right. This, how dare you? I've done a hundred interviews, yeah. and everybody takes that amount of water. And they, oh, so you're saying this could very well end up on well, curb? Well, either that or, or Wallace is just a huge fan because the way that the interacts and improvs is what would happen on right, the show. Right. Uh, I, I, I'm a huge fan as well. Sells through the show. Well, I, so that's I, it. I didn't think we'd be going. I this think long. you're avoiding the question. Uh, over, I'm avoiding uh, the question. I'm going to say over or under half a billion dollars to your father. Rest. Okay, none of your f- business. <laughs> nice, <laughs> brother. That? Thank you. And that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. What? What so he's you- saying people thinking that he's worth a half a billion dollars is ridiculous. Then he hones in on a hundred million. And I think that Larry David might be worth a hundred to 150 million because just watch his reaction. Just uh, look up what Seinfeld's like, worth and see what he's worth. Cause he's done all that. Plus curb your enthusiasm. He's done all those Seinfelds. I bet you he's worth hundreds. He's worth more. Yeah. He's worth more. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he, 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 it, it pretty much, he, he makes it feel like, a hundred to a hundred millions, the number. Half that, a billion? that number is so preposterous. Okay, ridiculous. How about a hundred million dollars? Okay, how about you shut up? See, right. now, okay. see now I feel like you're kind of getting, getting close. close. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How about you He's about shut to Don up? Levin himself. <laughs> is that all right? I gotta say, you all know, right. a hundred interviews. Up? Nobody's oh. ever said that to okay. me before. Okay, well, just shut up. Okay, okay. All right, we got that yeah. straight. You started in stand-up in the nineteen oh, seventies. Yeah. Uh, okay. See if you've heard this story before, Seth. Have you heard about his one of his gigs that he did? Listen, yeah. and I, and this is so Larry David. This is so on brand, and this is an infamous story that Chris Chris Wallace brings up. A story that one time you go out in a nightclub, yeah, 
you look around the room, you scan it, you say, you know what, never mind, and you walk off. I didn't say never mind. <clears throat> I said, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Really? I yeah. mean, but you didn't say a word. No. You didn't go out. You didn't do an, a, a couple of jokes that no. didn't fall flat. I, no, I didn't do anything. I just looked them over, and I went... I don't, I don't think Can so. you imagine if you're at a comedy <laughs> club? You're like, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for uh, Larry David. And he walks out. He looks at the crowd. Probably not nearly the crowd he anticipated or wanted. And he just says, I don't think so. And then walks out. It's pretty pimp. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Especially I don't think, before you're Larry David. Yeah, I don't think you ever wanted to be a stand-up comedian. I, think, I, I think you're right. And you know, they well, all, a comedian I'd, knows how to read a room. We just saw Andrew Schultz a week and a half ago, Pity and I, oh, over. It? And, uh, it was amazing. He's great, huh? And I think he liked the joke so much. He did an R joke, and the room popped. And he goes, I love Florida. Do you mind if I do a couple more jokes? And he went deep to really some politically incorrect jokes that were hilarious. And he did it because the room was ready Warranted. to hear it. Warranted. It was ready to hear it. Right. Just uh, didn't like the vibe. <laughs> didn't like the vibe. Yeah. And what did, what did they do? It was, did they? Uh, I, I guess they murmured what's going on. I don't know. I just <laughs> left. Yeah. In 2016 and 2020, I'm trying to get over the shot, but it's, yeah. it stings. In 2016 and 2020, you... Trying to uh, get over the what? The, the sting of, of the... You shut up. That, that's, that's a little hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> hurtful? Yeah, I mean, your question. What kind of question is that? What's a perfectly... You know, you know what Barbara Walters said? There's no such thing as an indiscreet question. Really? There are only indiscreet answers. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's true. <laughs> yeah. It's a good line, though. It's a good line. For an inter- Chris Wallace looks lost. He's not a good interviewer. <laughs> looks lost. Well, it's it's not, I mean, it's and I think and I think Larry's owning him and Schooling Larry him. and Larry's like I'm over this guy. He's not he's not interviewing me very well. He's trying to go back yeah. to In the question. In 2016, I wonder how Barbara Walters would react. Barbara, how many times a week do you have sex with your husband? Do you give him head? Do you think no, she's oh, like that? Oh, hold, on. <laughs> hold on. How do you think she would have reacted to that? Well, I think she'd that? say there's no such thing as an ind- I'm just not, none yeah. of your business. Yeah, okay. I don't think she would have said shut up. But oh, okay. In t- well, you, you, that really stung you, that <laughs> shut up. It's not nice. I'd say, <laughs> I think you may need to send me a note tomorrow. <laughs> to See, I don't think that was a play, Seth. I don't know. What do you think? You think that was a bit? That seemed like it was a little personal at the end to me. I, I, I it felt a little. It, to me, it fe- felt a little bitish. It a did. little rehearsed. Well, I think Chris Walsh was probably a fan, so he knew what to do. But I mean, he had he had completely lost control of the interview, right. and he was essentially just improving with Larry David at that point. So. Um, I'm sure he was really trying to get serious stuff out of Larry David because he doesn't do a ton of interviews. No, he doesn't. Not. I just don't think Larry David liked that question. I think that was legit. I don't think he wanted to answer it no matter how many ways you put it. Okay, not 500. How about 100? He didn't like it at all. They came to Florida, sun and sand. Uh, they got soaring costs in a culture war. They're saying now as much of an influx that we had with people moving to Florida during COVID and various things, that these people are now leaving Florida at an alarming rate Good. due to our due to our taxes and our insurance issue. Good luck. Did and, you, I read this. You know what? The people they the couple of people they interviewed. What I mean, they were they were jokes. It's what do you mean? The, the like how piece. why they're leaving? Uh, she the one lady packed her. She was from Kansas. And I'd like for people to leave the state. It seems too. like it's a little crowded <laughs> right now. I think her I think house. They should look at you and say if if you've not been in Florida for the last five years and you're in your four or get out. Hillsborough County she, is growing. Hugely. She complained. She complained about there was a hurricane. Uh, the there was a hundred degrees at night in the summer, and then she had an infant. Uh, what did she have? Infantation. Well, I can't talk about it. I can't say the word. Infestation of uh, <laughs> raccoons and possums oh. in her house. So yeah. she's leaving. Now you can go to San Francisco and get robbed and mugged, and or, or you know. So I mean, you know, whatever. Wait a minute. Do you mean it's I hot think, in Florida in the summer? Yeah, and, and is it cold in Idaho and in, the, in the winter? Yeah. I think I think that the people that have come to Florida need to. I think they need to go back. Yes. You know, right? Please. How about uh, today? You guys, no, no, no new P Diddy information. Mm, 
Just some strikes made by like Fiddy, you know, but and nothing new from yeah, Pitt. Fiddy's full hot on the deal, is he well, not? They're trying he to throw, you know, they're trying she, to throw is Jay-Z this, is, in on is it. Is his ex-wife, is this Pitty's, I mean, I'm sorry, is this, is this 50 Cent's ex-girlfriend? Uh, it's who, his baby mama who he shares an 11-year-old son with who's the, obviously younger in that picture. But. Right, but she... It might she be a sex hot. worker. She was she was named in the lawsuit as one of Diddy's sex workers, and now Fiddy is trying to fight for full custody of their shared son. And she's now fighting back, saying, "Oh yeah, well you rape me." So oh, it's getting real spicy. Is that where we're going? With yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're saying Fiddy's saying you've been named in the P Diddy lawsuit. You are a prostitute. You're not fit to be a mother for our son. I want full custody. And she's saying, oh well, that's convenient because we moved to New York. You never showed up. You were never around. And also, by the way, you raped me. So it's getting it's getting pretty heated. I I kind of like it. Mm, she's hot as hell too. Well, yeah, of course. Now was now was P Diddy like turning her out or like? Apparently, was she... she was a sex worker. She was getting paid on the regular to do sexual things with was him. P Di- was that, P Diddy or P Diddy's posse? A P Diddy allegedly, but who knows? Well, I mean, if P Diddy had her on payroll just to blast that ass, that ain't a sex yeah, worker. And I guess she was a drug worker well, too. Well, I think that's the definition of sex worker. Well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I, think, I think you just defined it. <clears throat> In I think, Nevada, I, that's legal. You know, I think if P Diddy this said, is, "Hey, listen, I don't have girl, a problem with it. I'm just that's what it is." No, but you like. When I think of a sex sex worker, I'm thinking of somebody that's got a bunch of young, you know, either women or young women, like, locked up and, like... No, if you're... You're considered a sex worker if you're on OnlyFans. What? Yeah. Really? You work in the realm of sex. You are a sex worker. So if P. Diddy said, hey, Daphne... Uh, 50 Daphne, c- maybe Daphne. Uh, Fifty <laughs> Cent's his ex, uh, baby mama, who, by the way, is hot as absolute balls. Yeah, she's very Jesus. Very she's woman. beautiful. Listen, old girl. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put. However, he, he agrees on an amount to, to pay her per month. Okay, and for that, I want you know. I mean, you know, you're my girl and everything. You're gonna, you're gonna. I'm gonna blast you. I'm gonna blast the hell out of you. And she's like, okay, you know, whatever, five, eight, ten, grand, whatever much it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, but it's mutually agreed upon. Right. How does that, like, she's still, I guess, considered a sex worker? A hundred percent. If you're paying someone to have sex with them, they are a sex worker. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's just what it is. But it, but it, it, it makes it feel so bad when it's really not that big a deal. Well, <laughs> she's, I mean, you know, she's named in the lawsuit for the prostitution reasons and... Although, yeah, we all would like for it to be legal and not have to go find a woman on 4th Street at the bus stop in the middle of the night. You know, this is how Diddy has set him up. So, yeah, I mean... D- fu- Diddy's just the upper the, the upper fringe of the the upper end of the sex worker, it, really? D- Diddy might have been farming her out to, you know, people that oh. would order order sex yeah, workers from It looks from like him. she was part of the uh, the freakout uh, participant, the, uh, the par- freakout clubs. Crazy parties. Yeah. Uh, oh, you mean, what do you mean, the freakout? So when they, he would, like, they would call it a freakout party, so he, they would invite celebrities, and then she'd be one of the girls that would probably, you know, take some of the guys around the farm and... Hook up with somebody around yep. the farm in a room that was videoed up. Yep. Well, let's not talk too much about it. I mean, I, I hit home a little bit. Sorry, Bubba. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I never had multiple people. It's just my wife. You know, whatever. I'm sorry. A uh, New York couple sued. Hold on. They own this property, and the people that are squatting on it are suing them. Supposedly. Yes. That's not going to happen now, in how, Florida. Now, how does that... What's that, let me? That won't happen in Florida no, with the, that new DeSantis law that he passed. Well, what the squatters did. A pair of alleged squatters accused un- of unlawfully moving into a Queens duplex are suing its rightful owners and, re- and refusing to vacate the $930,000 home. So, Anna, give me the Reader's Digest version of it. <clears throat> so, there were some squatters that were spotted by a, like the, their, the couple's real estate agent. They went there. They saw somebody in the window. They called the cops, whatever. They were removed. Then the squatters come back and they bring all these, quote, documents that they signed like a legit lease and I guess they're clearly photoshopped or doctored up and stuff like that, but they're now suing the couple saying that they were evicted unlawfully, but they're just squatters. The couple has spent 530000 in renovating the uh, the investment properly, uh, property and secured tenants for both rental units when their real estate broker told them that they'd actually, you know, the, pro- the property... The locks had been <clears throat> changed on the property... And so then the real estate broker was like, did you order this? And the couple was like, no. 
So squatter in, be- in between the time that the new people could move in <clears throat> and the squatters that got in changed the locks and are now fighting with them in the legal system. Mm-hmm. Yes, and they've now also where, destroyed do, well, their home. Where do squatters come up with enough money to retain an attorney? I don't know. They don't need one. The, the laws are so stacked against people in those states, whereas in Florida, the laws changed significantly where we have the right to protect ourselves Can and protect our homes. Well, that one sheriff said that, um, yeah. you know, if... If he said, uh, uh, we know one person tried to shoot at the assailant, and, and if you think you did something wrong, please come forward. We can train you how to shoot better, and next time maybe you can hit him and save the, the taxpayer some money. <laughs> I mean, if you were to walk into a uh, investment property that you have, and there were squatters in there, and I mean, I don't know if you could shoot them right away just in being in there. But I'm sure you could probably pull your gun out and, and try to usher them out. And Grady and if Judd a, said this if morning. If a guy took could. a baseball bat at you, then you, and then you, you know, you put, oh, yeah. you put, shoot. yeah. Grady Judd said this morning that what you're supposed to do is just enforce the laws we have burglary, trespassing, theft. All of those apply under Florida law. And to if you shooting? Can, I don't know if you can shoot them, but if, you know, in, in Florida, you have the castle doctrine. If you're in your home and you have a reasonable fear of. But of, what if they're of, already in your home? Well, I don't know if you. I mean, I think you're allowed in Florida to enter your own home. So if you enter in your own home and there's a guy, but it's not your own. home. I think home, you call the police and in like Polk County, they're going to remove those people. In Hillsborough County, I'm I'm sure that Sheriff Cronister is going to remove those people. You call your sheriff, not your TPD, and you have the sheriff remove these people because if they prevent fraudulent documentation, then what they're doing is trespassing, um, probably uh, theft. Burglary. I mean, if they're in your home without authorization, it's burglary. Uh, when I come back, TikTok's wild new dating method uh, has gone viral, and she says she's got some ways for you ladies to might want to for the for the handful of ladies that are listening to us that are single trying to find a man. You might want to listen to the next story because supposedly she's got this surefire way to make that man just want to be totally, you know, subservient to you. Be up, you know, ups- I think she I think the word they use is obsessed. Mount oh. the jugs. Yeah, yeah that's the, what they're saying. Mount the jugs? Yeah, they'll be saying they'll want to want mount the jugs after this. <laughs> that's what you want is to like uh like a like a pig in the blanket kind yeah. of deal. Yeah. Oh, okay. T T T F N. Yes, that's right. Okay. It's the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Want to listen to the show on demand and on the go? Enlist today at BubbaArmyHQ.com and sign up and start listening. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show will be back after this. Oh, it's not TFing. 
Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I actually have a sucker into reading the article. It's, dude, this happens all the time. I don't know. Well, just like you do, well, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we can go. I feel like I've done this with intermittent fasting and everyone in my life. There was some bad press that came out a couple weeks ago about intermittent fasting. I got <coughs> 10 emails from people. What say you now, bitch? I said it's right for me, not for you. I'm just like, go ahead, keep eating. See what happens. Okay. I think you laughs. I'll put a I'll put a couple of lanes in there. Yeah. So it's just like repeating something, getting in their head about something. Oh. So let's see. Oh. Jamie, you say you're not the tolerant. Right. So what? Right. So right. Oh yeah. I'm dying. To exactly one week away. We're not in the direct line, are we? being responsible but with the brakes. Good. Oh, heard that. Mm -hmm, that's the Aggressive. Girl there. Feels good. Morning, Brian Gilson. How's everybody doing? Gripper Lips. DJ Clegg. Pablo Pacheco, what up, buddy? Blizzard Bob. Blizzard Bob. Mm. Needs to get to the Purple ground, you doing buddy? It's J Useless Knowledge nine oh four. Good morning. Talented painter. Pablo Picasso. Um, I mean, it's. I don't like like have it in my house. Yeah. Did he die like in the eighties or something? Like he's uh, I recent. Did he do his museum? No. Pablo. Let's try to start the pod fairly early. Okay. Oh, I know. So that we can get out of here. Yeah, I'm seventy-three. It's incredible. Let me so we can get out of here. Wow. Sounds good. So we can power pick it. Power pick. It's so nice to see the U.S. doing well in the WSL farm ground. What up, Chad? See, Meg, you doing, buddy? You're right, Meg, check out. The Love Sponge Show. Were you sleeping in and missed the first hour of the show? Don't worry. It's all at BubbaArmyHQ.com. Now back to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. So, let me, for my celebra celebrating my 38th year in radio to the day, Ooh. April 1st. Really? Happy anniversary. April 1st, 19, 1986 was my first day on the radio. 
and celebrating my first day on the radio. I'm sorry, the anniversary of my being a radio personality. One of our slowest days ever, Lummy. Very slow. It's first of the month. It's April Fool's, and it's my anniversary. A lot of things going against it, my friend. Uh, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App at the Bubba Army. Appreciate all that you do for us. And at the least, you could go to our YouTube channel, sign up for our YouTube channel, and look at all the great stuff we have up on there, including my restaurant reviews, Lummy's Goat Report, various things from Seth. Anna, Anna doesn't do a lot on YouTube for whatever reason. <clears throat> but I rewatched your Sonic food review. Yeah. It was funny. You think so? Yeah, when you got just upset at them, the sirens were in the background, you're just like, yeah, they're coming to arrest whoever made this piece of... I was like, know. they're coming to arrest the people that are trying to perpetrate themselves at the restaurant here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, uh, then and like, if you, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but then the guy that got his food before me, as he backs up his backup tray, like, just reiterating the fact that I... And I even tipped him $2. Oh, I you know you know on Sonic they they give you a, a ability to tip, so I even tipped two bucks thinking that's really gonna have him bring my food out extra fast. Yep, oh, horrible, absolutely horrible. Oh, let me I got a hundred dollars on the uh, on the PayPal PayPal Venmo Cash App. Let please reset so I can give a proper homage. John Costica. Yes, of course, John Costica. <laughs> my, my little steel slinging son of a bitch. Love him. So, uh, Lummy, this is the uh, a chick from TikTok. Yes, that, that lays out for you, ladies out there, or just, anyone really. Uh, you just want to make people go crazy over you, you singles. Just get people just absolutely obsessed about how hot you are, or whatever. Put filters on your I mean, video. It's... Let me see here. Let me. I'm trying to hit. Here we go. Thank you. I had it earlier going. Oh. Son of a oh, bitch! No. I had. Do you I think even... someone that doesn't look like her would be able to do this same like grift? <laughs> I don't know. Here no. we go. She's given herself a lot of credit for something that's been around for a long time. But <laughs> what, okay. what's, what's been around for a long time? Her quote, yeah, caboodle yeah. method. What? Her what? She calls it the caboodle method. She'll explain what it is. It's kind of stupid, but it, I mean, it, this is, is a it thing. What Seth, is it what Seth said earlier? My caboodle is intermittent caboodle fasting. I'll just say that. I thought it was Bubba, and I read the whole thing waiting for the high Listen, spot, and he just got I me good. This <laughs> right, here we go. Hold on. If you don't know about the caboodle method with a boy... You obviously don't follow me. What are you doing? Listen to me. I invented this method last year, and it has changed lives. So let's talk about the Cavoodle method. Let's talk about how stupid your lips look. Step one. Have something that you are extremely obsessed with. For example, mine is Cavoodles. My- well, can I ask a stupid question? What's a Cavoodle? It's a dog. I don't know. Okay. Either. I didn't I know either. Is Robert Irwin. And everyone sends me stuff of Robert Owen. But when I invented this method, it was Cavoodles. I'm obsessed with Cavoodles. I talk about them all the time. I un- unknowingly talked about them so much with an ex of mine. So, 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 so much. To the point where every single time he saw something cavoodle or... A Cavoodle is a dog. Okay, it's a type of dog. I've got one. He would think of me. Whenever he saw a Cavoodle, he'd be like... Favea likes Cavoodles. Favea, Cavoodle, Cavoodle, Favea. He would send me Instagram reels, TikTok reels, everything before we started dating. They are cute dating. dogs. Fast forward, we start dating. I asked him, what made you want to date me? And he said, everywhere I went and there was a Cavoodle, I thought of you. So I was thinking about you a lot and now, fuck you. We're now oh, broken up. Dear. And <laughs> every time he sees a Cavoodle, he's just like, my ex. my ex. We're on really good terms though, but like, he would never be able to escape me. This is our society. Oh, God. This is what I hope Sage and little Sethy and Walker do not turn out like. No. Well, this is why I'm for banning TikTok, by the way. Right. My, kid, my kids are on TikTok. My daughter on TikTok. For sure. The stupid stuff I mean, like that. I mean, these getting a platform. ramen noodles, obsessed with the Boldak, the guy that she's talking to <laughs> every day. TikTok videos, if he's in the shops and he sees it, every time he wants noodles, he'll text her and be like, I really want ramen. Ramen is associated with are they, her. Are these bitches pay pigs? Like, where these guys pay them all this money to obsess over the stupidest stuff about, that reminds them of them? I think she's just a, a dumb girl on TikTok that's trying to give you his. Every single day now. Cause I talk about what type of following does this bitch have? I'm just no asking idea. for a friend. Um, I mean, so other than the crap coming out of her mouth, she's the absolutely way, beautiful. The lips are no, too she's big. No, she's not. But it's she, just, it's, it's, she looks she's 10 years older she's than she is. She's probably 25. She's she's filtered. Filtered. She's, she's filtered she doesn't up. even look real. She looks like an an, an animated it's AI. She's so filtered. She posts Instagram photos. People tag me in his Instagram photos. People send me stories like my friends, right? Every You time. can just tell by the shadow of her face. 
There's no creases. There's no lines. And, and yeah, that, that, that yeah. it's completely uh, a Smoothed filter. Over. Rubber only comes up, especially in the. New- I'd like to have a dating app that was filter free. Just mm. you know, no, bitch. you wouldn't. <laughs> God, he looks so fucking hot. In that. I just oh. want to. I just want to cuddle him. I just want to cuddle him with a koala and stuff. You know, every single time someone sees that ad, bam, they send it to me it's in my inbox. I'm like, yeah, I've seen it five times today. Right, I've I've had enough. I'm I sorry. Think that's so that way. Let's jack him up. I'm I'm just sorry that they ought to. We ought to have some type of uh, IQ test that you'd have to, like just to be able to roll around. Like, that bitch is going to end up being, like, you know, a mom or a grandma someday. And then, like, think about if she's that stupid, how stupid her people that might be, you know, that come from her loins she'll, might be. She'll be putting out videos about how you can uh, drink wine as you're, uh, you know, carrying your newborn around. Exactly. That's right. That's right. <laughs> My intention, that federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. Talking about the Baltimore Bridge? Uh-huh. Why wouldn't, um, why would it maybe the insurance company... Of the tugboat, you know, like, like, why does the federal this government should. have to come in? And I mean, my intention that federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. There is some fault. There, there, there's so, this was somebody's fault that probably has insurance. Yeah, the people that built it. The Skyway's been hit multiple times since that big mess, and they have enough buffer from the from the structural supports to keep that from happening. Right. Well, they put this, baffles up so that they provided bumpers. A, a bumpers so that you can't hit it. There's a ba- excuse me a ballard that, that the, prevents a boat Congress from actually hitting support it. Support my effort. This is going to take some time. Talk about pandering. The people of yep. Baltimore can count on us, though. Yeah, listen, listen you, hey, Joe, you got Baltimore locked in, my friend. Pay for the bridge or not, yeah, they Maryland love you. Jurors. Stick with them at every step of the way. Until the port is reopened and the bridge is rebuilt. You know, we're not leaving until this job gets done. Not leaving until then. No, we're not leaving until this He's already left. Yeah. He left the, Biden has left the building. All right, so I got I to gotta go real fast because I want to start the podcast a little bit early. But I can, and I know we won't be able to find the break, Lummy, because I don't know that we were even, I was even recording the show and keeping it back in the day. But I can remember probably in 2000, 2001, that I had an idea, and I said it on the air, that you get a gun that cannot fire if the owner's fingerprint has not been programmed as the rightful owner to fire that gun. So that gun would not fire. If I bought a gun and they program my fingerprints in it, then nobody else can shoot that gun. I I, I I thought of, I mean, I, I actually had this idea 20 years ago. The Cavoodle method. You had it way before anybody <laughs> yeah, else. Yeah, the Cavoodle method. So let me, I see, <laughs> I see this article. America's first biometric smart gun is finally here, but will it work? And there's some downsides to it. Be like, you know, well, listen, you can't take your, your, you can't take your friend out to the shooting range and let him shoot your gun. Sorry. But for the most part, nobody else really needs to be shooting your gun. Yeah. Well, is that an unfair restriction on your Second Amendment rights? Per- perhaps. Perhaps. You're probably, that. that's where you probably get me on the deal. Is that I guess it would infringe on your Second That's the argument. Is, is and on your Second Amendment rights. And then if they make this rights. kind of gun, do they make you sell all your other ones? Because you don't have a biometric device on your gun and you can't retrofit it and then therefore you have to get rid of all the guns that you have because they don't have a biometric on it yeah you know a great point bud i appreciate sorry to bring, <laughs> sorry to bring it down at 956 uh i gotta we gotta go we will do the podcast let's call it can we let me can we get it by 15 after yeah it can we roll it by 15 we yeah. could do it at five after oh hell yeah we could absolutely with our new technology of ingesting and and and, de- and deportation Warp and all- speed buddy Fantastic. Five, 10 05. Everybody be back in the studio, okay? Yes, sir. And we will do our podcast, our exclusive Monday podcast that's available on all of our podcasting platforms. Try to go find them. If not, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. <laughs>
buttoned up, it's Mini Macho. The BRN agent, Thomas Buttoned Up B. And for everything else, go to TheBubbaArmy.com. Now, time for the legal disclaimer. Exactly. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show is intended solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this show without express written consent of the Bubba Radio Network is prohibited. We must dissuade him of this delusion. Until next time, always remember. I'll repair the love. 